Well, hello, mofos. Hey. How y'all My doing? My cell phone's in Guala- like Guatemala on the other side of the room. So. <laughs> You're making sure it's not going to interfere with the... Uh, with the feed, your internet actually does look better so far today. I like my computer. Knock on wood, man. But every week we say this shit. We're like, all right, let's not jinx it. But I refresh my Skype, and usually I'm such an idiot because the the Mac laptop asked me what the like administrator like name is and password, mm-hmm. and I usually never know what it is. And then just today, I was like, I think it's just Corin and my password. So I typed that shit in and it worked. Oh God, there you go. <laughs> I was like so dumb. I Nail- was like, oh, it's just what it is. Nailing a password on this first try is such a, it's like, a, oh God, what a relief this is. Such a good feeling. But then you'll try to go to the same shit three months later and then you forget it. And you're like, yeah. I just had this. How did this fucking happen? Well, anyway, so it worked. Like I did every update on Skype and it was like, you want to do this shit too? I was like, yeah, fuck it, do it. <laughs> Damn. Did like some extra shit. How long did it take? It probably was a long upgrade. Um, it wasn't that long, to be honest with you. It was actually quick. It like it wasn't one of those that took forever and was like. You remember back in the day, like the piece of paper used to be like. No, I'm talking about. Oh, you don't remember that when you would download oh, yeah, something? Yeah, 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 I do, I do, I remember that. And it That's would say school. like, "This will be done in six hours and fifty-four seconds," and then like <laughs> you'd wait six hours, and it'd be like. You've got another twelve hours, and you're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it looks good, so that's good news. We got 80, yeah. 82 polls that we have to do today, so we should probably oh. jump right into the polls. Let's get it. So first of all, we'll do morning shower versus night shower because we debated that last time, mm-hmm. and um, I'm very interested to see what people have to say about that. I know. I think um, I switched my tune on that shit. I, I am a morning shower. But there isn't a greater feeling of showering and then going into your bed when it's like freshly, when you're fresh. Yeah. Um, so I'm 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 curious what the audience will say. My guess is that most will say morning because my guess is that most people shower in the morning, so they're yeah. just gonna do like a quick like tribalism thing of like yeah that's my shit so I'm gonna do that. Mm-hmm. But then I think you're right that if people were to stop and think about it, like I was mostly a morning shower person my whole life. But when mm-hmm. I stop and think about it, the thought of the night shower is actually better because for the reasons you described, when you're done showering and you go to lay down and you're like, oh, shit, I feel so clean in this bed right now. But um, also some people like my wife had a problem. She used to sweat a lot in her sleep. Like some people like, you know, have wet dreams. Some people. <laughs> she's going to hate the fact that you just mentioned that. <laughs> I know. That shit was bad. Like, she would wake up in puddles of sweat. You know, not for nothing, not for nothing, and it might also make her better that I'm about to say this, uh, feel better, is that I I think I actually have that, too. Sometimes I feel like I sweat at night. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Not even because, like, the room, like, is whatever. I just sweat. It's weird. It could be so many different things. Maybe, like, an intense dream or, like, like, I don't know what the fuck the cause of that is, but, like... Nothing used to help her. I never regularly got um, a wet dream where you like nut in your sleep. Yeah. I, I mean, I had. I think I had it like a few times, but it wasn't like. It yeah, first. Of all, it wasn't even when I was going through puberty. It happened yeah. like after that. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't have that regularly. And the thought, like, how often does that happen with other people? Like, is that a thing where when people go through puberty, like four nights a week, they wake up and they nutted themselves? <laughs> Yeah, probably. I mean, like, or if you're just like, I don't know, maybe you watch something before you went to sleep of like a, like a sexy ass girl on a commercial or something. And that's the last thing on your mind. No, you know what? I think it's when I was, uh, when I was like 19, 20, all that, I was probably jerking off so much that I just drained myself of all my (laughs) nut. (laughs) And so I didn't have any left when I went to sleep. (laughs) Nothing left in the tank. Yeah. So I never really had that. But that's a weird concept, isn't it? I've had the sex dreams. It's a strange dreams. concept. I'm sure yeah. most people have had sex dreams. Like there was like there was a time when I was like dreaming I was having sex and I woke up and I was literally fucking my bed. Like <laughs> like I, I was like laying on my stomach and just like pumping. And I was like, holy shit, I'm sleeping and I'm fucking my bed. This is crazy. Like when I woke up and I was like, oh my God, I'm like actually doing it. Yeah. And then, It's such a bad feeling Yeah, when you wake up and you're like, damn, I'm not fucking banging Giselle (laughs) (laughs) and then I wasn't once you wake up and you realize you're doing it it's like you can't finish that it's like no no what am I gonna do just keep fucking my bed and use like basically my belly and the sheets as the (laughs) 
<laughs> as as the fake vagina here is that what i'm gonna do that'd be so sad <laughs> they got the robots and shit now so i wouldn't be surprised people just close their eyes and envision the, whatever the fuck they want oh that's coming man i i saw a, a funny thing i retweeted the other day somebody was like how do you unlink your twitter from amazon and then the very next tweet was the dude bought like a a, a big ass and vagina like a a thing that you're supposed to fuck Oh man! And it was like I just purchased this on Amazon, and it was the big thing. <laughs> oh, so man. he was asking like, "How do I unlink this?" And then after a while, he was like, "Fuck it," and he just bought it, and then it showed. What did every time he buys something on Amazon, it shows up on his Twitter? Yeah, I guess he linked it somehow. Oh, that's that's probably not a good move. Yeah, I mean that happens sometimes. If people have their Twitter linked to their YouTube and they like a video, sometimes it automatically tweets it, and like you like this video. Oh, yeah. I mean I know that's happened to. I mean. Um, we spoke about it, like when the Knicks assistant coach, Kurt Rambis is like this old white dude. He oh, yeah, was yeah, like yeah, in yeah. like Asian, like porn videos yeah, or something. Wasn't that, um, I thought it was the Knicks actual coach. Wasn't it Jeff Hornacek? No, no, Hornacek wasn't doing it. It was oh, okay. uh, Kurt Rambis, okay. which is just Kurt even Rambis. funnier because he just sits there in silence where the other coach at well, least stands there and looks like a G. Well, Ted Cruz got got too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he had to blame it on like a staffer. Like who the fuck are you kidding, Ted? Who are <sighs> you kidding? It's not a staffer. It's you. Yeah. Those are bad, but like the Amazon thing, there's no context behind it. So if you're buying like elephant jelly or some shit, people are like, what the fuck is he doing with that? Yeah, I was just trying to think, are there are there things I'm embarrassed to buy? Yeah, of course there are. Even buying toilet paper is like... Were I'm, you ever embarrassed to buy condoms back in the day? Because like, that, that's a big debate question. Yeah, like, no, yeah. I'm embarrassed to buy anything that's somewhat private, like even toilet paper. It's like you buy it. And the That's a weird cashier's thing, like using it and you're like yep i'm gonna take a shit and wipe my ass with that <laughs> it's like they're holding the thing that's gonna be all up on your ass in a second yeah that's true wipes are probably even worse because you're like yo my thing is messy down there <laughs> yeah but the funny thing is that shit is cleaner too like that's cl- like you're saying i'm cleaner than other people if i'm buying these wipes that's true uh, yeah but you're cleaner because your shit is messier <laughs> Like if you just well, you bought, could be, you could be a normal shitter, but use those those wipes just to be clean. I think anyone who uses wipes knows nah. it's because it's going to be a little bit messier. I'm standing my there. ground on this, son, because I just started using these banging ass wipes, and I was just because. Like I feel well, like people yes, don't yes. waste a wipe if it's just on some regular. Well, like oh, I just took a nice dump and nah, I just used a wipe because you know I was thinking about it, and the like for example throughout Europe. <laughs> they use um, bidets, so they ev- they almost all those places have bidets where after you take a shit, water squirts in your asshole oh, and cleans yeah, it, yeah. and then you wipe and then you wipe yourself and you get super clean from that. We don't, we just don't have that in the U.S. And everybody just uses toilet paper, and like you know, you can make the argument, yeah, that's totally fine. Why not just use toilet paper? But then when you stop and think about it, it's like, well, if you really want your ass to be clean, you either got to do a bidet or you got to do some sort of a wipe. And so I was like, yeah, I, I actually want to use a wipe now because that's just that makes sense to me. Like it'll be cleaner and it'll be better. And so it I found true. these flushable wipes and they're they're good. I like. Yeah, them there's nothing better than when someone has wipes in their bathroom, because when you're using toilet paper, if there was a survey of like how many asses are actually clean. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You just use toilet paper. Yeah, yeah. On a, on a, it's not high enough. It's like. Yeah, I know when I'm at work or something like that, like I'm just doing a couple wipes unless it's like if it's super messy, I'll probably do less wipes, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, damn, I got to get back to my desk. And and even probably even way more with dudes because hairy asses and shit and like you yeah. take a shit with your hairy ass and then go to wipe it with just yeah. toilet paper. It's like, no, use a wipe or something or yeah. who actually needs to get on their bidet shit like that should be standard. But we're already we're too far down the path of not having them. It's not like everybody's just going to randomly. I mean, I guess yeah, you can't train the, Americans to use that. They have like, like the portable stuff. ones now, though, where you can attach it to your toilet and use it. Really? Yeah, like I don't know. Portable is not the right word, but like you connect it to your toilet and then you. Have can, you ever used one? Because like I've, I've seen them, I've seen pictures of them. I don't but I've know never if I've actually ever held my one. ass over I, one. I know that um, they have Japanese toilets that it comes in the toilet also. Like really good, they're really nice toilets, and like when oh, you're the water done, splashes up from the toilet. When you're done, you press a button or something, and then they it does it, and hmm. apparently it feels great. I'm sure it feels amazing. <laughs> Imagine you don't even have to shit; you just go in there to, squ- to squirt the hot water in your ass. You're like, oh yes, this is great. <laughs> I'm starting to realize that anything 
with like a little bit of like warmth to it or heat to it is just like is such a good feeling like it does so much good for your body like i was taking a nap and i just woke up and i made like a nice hot chocolate and it just like warmed my body and it like starts my brain up and like when i drive um like my wife's car she's got on the steering wheel oh the heated steering wheel heating steering wheel like who would have fucking thought of that and it's just like You're driving and your hands are feeling warm. Well, my mom recently got a heated floor in her bathroom. I've seen people with that shit. That too is genius. Yeah, and she she loves it. She's like, you could keep it at an exact temperature. I'm like, Jesus, look at what you've done. (laughs) That's what I'm saying. But it's funny because extreme heat and extreme cold, they're both used in a therapeutic way. So you have like a sauna or a steam room. Those get really hot and people go in there to exfoliate. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other thing too. I think it's called a cryo chamber where like you put your body the cold in, shit, right? Yeah, in a really cold yeah. thing and mm-hmm. it, they're both supposed to have therapeutic effects. And I, I yeah. think that's cool. that's interesting and cool that apparently extremes on both sides do that. Obviously you can't go overboard with it or else you're putting your putting yourself in danger. But I mm-hmm. used to love heat like, m- heat more. Like I used to be in the summer it was my favorite even if it was like 90 degrees. I was like, "Oh, this is I like hot weather. I just like being in hot weather." But mm-hmm. as I got older, Heat now I don't do as well with, and I prefer to be in like cooler weather. So I'd rather be outside in forty three degrees than ninety three degrees. Yeah, I think I would agree with that one too. Yeah. Yeah, because now I feel like stuffy when it's hot. Yeah. I'm almost like, geez, I, I even though I don't have trouble breathing, I'm almost at the point where it's like a psychological thing where I'm like, I feel like it's hard to breathe because like the air is too thick and it's like oppressive. Yeah. The heat can be oppressive. Yeah, but I also feel like the heat is just so much good for the like so much better for your body and shit like that. Like if people live in Arizona or Florida or something like that. It, it, well, yeah. If you take someone from the like just the like a birth and they they grow up in both places and they eat the same shit, like the person in the heat, in my opinion, is going to live longer just because it's better for your bones or whatever. Well, I know that when people have aches and pains and shit when they get older, they will mm-hmm. move to a climate that's like mm-hmm. Florida or something because it it's better with uh you know they don't have, to have as many aches or pains or whatever. So yeah. apparently the cold does have some sort of an effect where you feel that more. People want mm-hmm. that heat when they get older, so even on a smaller scale too. like to- like toasting a fucking sub or something, just like the heat in your mouth tastes better than if you just eat like a regular ass piece of bread. Oh well, yeah, I do prefer a hot meal to <laughs> a not yeah. hot meal for sure. You know? Um, so the next poll, we were going to, we wanted to do a beer poll, but we have to figure out which beers we want to put on there. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously we're going to put Corona because you, you and I are both Corona guys. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure we probably have to put, I mean, we have to put like Budweiser or Bud Light or something, right? I feel like light, I think, I think I saw a poll that light, like Bud Light was like the top beer or some shit like okay, that. So oh. we'll have to do Bud Light then. Yeah, but then if you do Bud Light, you got to do Coors Light too, or some shit. Yeah, I mean, I guess that. See, that's why we needed to talk it out. We got to figure. Or out... Or Heineken's f- got to be on there. People, that's a go-to for people. So then that's our poll right there: Corona, Heineken, Bud Light, Coors Light. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying what, to think. Of it. I mean, there's other beers that I like better. Like I actually like Foster's, the Australian. Foster's beer, is good. But Michelob, that, you, we used to get down on. Remember when we were doing our diets, we would drink those Michelob Ultras. Michelob Ultra, yeah. Like that's the thing is like, ah, see, this is why the poll is so hard. Like I know Foster's can't make the poll because it's too, like, obscure. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I, I think it would. Hold but like weight. Michelob's competing. Like I feel like Mick, maybe throw Michelob on there instead of Coors Light. You know what I mean? Like uh, I think it would just get it would get waxed. Really. Yeah, I think Michael, like, that shit's going extinct soon. That's like oh, a really? dinosaur. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to the bar ordering Michelobes anymore. Okay, so best If they are, that shit's in the back of the fucking fridge. Even the bartender's like, huh? Like, new bartenders? <laughs> I haven't heard of Michelob. Corona, Bud Light, Heineken, Coors, Coors Light. How the fuck do you spell Heineken? God damn it. Why, why can't there be, like, intuitive names? You know, like... Dave's Just, beer. <laughs> <laughs> Heineken. Oh, I got. I would have spelled it right. I'm too and then cautious. There's like, now there's like just weird hipster beers and all that shit. Like yeah. all those weird crafts. And... I mean, like that's the thing is people are going to respond to this poll like, I like Blue Moon, bro. Yeah, Blue Why Moon. Or put like Blue Moon on there. There's this shit they only sell in Wisconsin. And I live like 10 minutes from the Wisconsin borderline. It's called Spotted Cow. Oh, shit. That shit is banging. It sounds like you're drinking a cow's 
bile. <laughs> yeah, it's whatever it's they put in that shit is mad good. Um, so I feel like I'm not happy with the ones that we're really going with, but I know we have to put Bud Light. I know we have to put Corona. I know we have to put mm-hmm. Heineken. Mm-hmm. Um, Coors Light, I feel like we could replace with another beer. But I kind of hear you that it's really up there in the, like, in the beer sphere. Yeah, and I mean, I don't know what else would replace it. Like, Blue Moon is big. I'm no, that like... ain't big enough. Okay, so there's Coors Amstel? Light. I'm looking now. I, I just looked it up. There's Stella, which is the, yeah, yeah. that's a big one. Guinness. Nah, it's not. I wouldn't even, I mean, is that a beer? I mean, it's, yeah, it's a dark, yeah. Blue, Guinness, yeah, I guess Corona, it's a Miller Light. <clears throat> oh, Miller. Um, Bex. Bex. <laughs> Beck the singer. <laughs> Beck the singer. We drink his pee. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we got to do Coors Light unless... I'm trying to think of anything else. Unless Stella. I mean, I feel like if we throw that in the poll, that could be like a come from behind type shit. I think how Stella got her groove back. <laughs> Imagine I typed that whole thing out on the poll and people are like, what the fuck are you doing? Dos Equis? Oh, Dos Equis too. World's most interesting. Um, all right, fuck it. We're putting course. And then people are going to every, there's going to be so many responses to this poll. Like, why don't you put this one? Natty Light is big for colleges. For colleges. But again, like that's the thing is like, so if I had my druthers, I'd put, I'd put uh, Foster's on here. But I know yeah. that that doesn't belong in the top four. Yeah. Well, like I'm trying to narrow it down to the top four and just let it rock, but Yeah, I don't think it makes that top four. All right. Last question. Ditch Coors Light for Stella or no? No. Nah. No. No, nah, okay. I don't think so. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. there's Stella and I'm thinking But I feel like Coors is like an old white dude beer. Like if like if you're a sixty year old white dude, you've been drinking Coors forever, but like you're not listening to this show if you're a sixty year old white dude. There's Unless maybe eight percent course... of my audience is a six year old white dude. No offense to you guys, I love you, but I'm just saying <laughs> that like core. My point is, cores is not going to have a big contingent among my Twitter followers. Where there might be some people who are like, I like Stella. If you wanted to to cover the light category, you did cores light, but then you took Bud Light off and did Budweiser because Budweiser well, so is a staple. But the thing is, the 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 heavier beers, I don't know that. I feel like the light is the go-to more than the than light like Corona. Is definitely the go-to. Corona. I just put Corona. I didn't put Corona light. I didn't put Corona extra. I just put Corona. So maybe. So what if I you just... did Budweiser slash Bud Light and then Coors Light? Budweiser slash Bud Light, Coors Light slash Coors, Coors Light, yeah. Coors Light. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I could do that. Because if you're like a Coors drink, like yeah, if you're in the Bud Light category, like if you don't have an option for Budweiser, yeah, that covers both of them. Corona. I'm so I hate the fucking contestants on every single one of Ellen's shows. They're just like over the top, like fake. Like no human being acts like that, even as excited as you are. Okay. With anything. That is definitely true, which is why I never watch those I know. Like morning shows. I get so caught into those shits, man. Really? Yeah, for some reason, like, she has her new show, Game of Games, it's on in the background, and it's, like, they stand on this shit, and they have to answer questions, and, like, they shake their hands, and they're like, oh, Ellen, I'm so excited! (laughs) (laughs) Okay, this this pulls out. Corona, Extra Light. uh, So what do we think's gonna win that shit? um, Who's gonna win? I think... Hopefully Corona, because that's my that's like my boy. Like Corona you know what, is like. Man? I think Corona's gonna win. I hope so. But and then he- I feel like Coors Light's gonna be last. Corona's gonna be first, but then he- Heineken and Budweiser might duke it out. You know? What do you think? I think For like I think Corona's gonna win. And then Bud Light, Coors Light, and I think Heineken's gonna get last. Really? That's yeah, I don't think Heineken's that popular anymore. Now, because you could tell people didn't fuck with it that much. Because when they came out with that Heineken Light shit, everyone was like thirsty to fucking go after that shit, which means they wanted to give up on Heineken fast. 
I don't even remember what my opinion is on Heineken. I think I was pleasantly surprised when I had a Heineken, and I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. I think we used to like the Heineken lights. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I ever... I don't even think I ever had a regular Coors. I've had Coors Light. I don't know if I've ever had a Coors. You had to have in a bottle or some shit. Yeah, because the the mountains turned blue on the bottle. Or is that Coors Light? That was Coors Light. That was Coors Light. Oh, what bottle is just regular Coors then? Or it's Coors like, is in it's like, like that a yellowy cream color. Yes, it's like a creamish yellowy. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had That's that what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that. I've had a Budweiser and I've had a Bud Light, of course. That's just like whatever. Like every those, that might be the number one selling beer, but it's just to me, it's like whatever. What a Bud Light? Yeah, Bud Light and Budweiser. It's like, like taste wise. Yeah, it's like yeah, eh. it's just like yeah. Here, here, here's a beer. Yeah, exactly. Whereas with the Corona, I I think like I'm having a Corona, not yeah. like I'm having a beer. It's like oh, I'm yeah. having a Corona. Yeah, because then you're like you could throw a lime in it and switch yes. up the taste a little bit more. Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't throw you can't throw anything in a Bud Light or a Coors Light like. No one's gonna be like, "Hey, chop up this strawberry, put it in your Coors Light." You know? <laughs> well, with a with a Bud Light, it's like an old trucker guy smokes a cigarette and like finishes it, and then he gives you the cigarette butt, and then you got to drop that in your beer and drink it. That's what. <laughs> that's what. That's what it is. That's that's the sense I get from that. Were you a fan of all those weird like uh, Bud Light limes and all that shit? I like Bud those? Light lime, and I admit that that's pretty sad, but I did like it. <laughs> Why not? It had a good taste. I don't think I. I don't think I. Lo- I mean, I think I could have a couple of them, and then I was like, yeah, "I'm a little. I'm gonna get nauseous or some two, shit." Two things that I had recently. People got me for my birthday. Honey wine, delicious, insanely delicious. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and I was talking about that recently. I think maybe even on the podcast. So I want honey wine. Uh, and then I had. I, t- I think I told you when I went to the Japanese steakhouse. I had plum wine, and that's out of this world good. Are are you into wines? Because I I've never gotten really not into really wines. like I'm into I I'm not there are people who are really big on wines and they know yeah. like you know all, everything about them and they care about the dates you know I the, think that whole industry is a fucking sham wow yeah I mean they did they did studies and like apparently the number one um champagne I think it was that people picked out of a bunch of them was one that was like sixteen dollars or something and they had it yeah. in the mix with like thousand dollar champagnes and stuff. Yeah, but I like champagne. I like dry champagnes a lot, and I like um, and I like the sweet wines. So I like you know like plum wine, honey wine, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I'm not big on any of that stuff, really. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like you know the, the extra dry dry champagne though. I think that's pretty good. Um, yeah. So next one we were gonna do is Girl Scout cookies, but we have to figure out which Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, there's so many. Well, Thin Mints. Well, Thin Mints is gonna win every. Yeah, it's win the whole shit. You think so? Yeah, just because it's like the most, it's it's the we it's the Jordan of Girl Scout cookies. You okay. know, LeBron may be like the the purple shit trying to come on strong, but Thin Mints is the uh, OG Jordan of that shit. Well, I think mm, you don't think so. Well, I, here's the thing that's clouding my judgment a little. I'm so in love with Samoas. That's the purple joint, that's right? That's the like purple the- one. Those are banging. That That's my favorite too. I'm so in love with them that it's hard for me to fathom that somebody would not pick them over everything else. Thin mints are just so simple and good and just you, you could freeze those bitches. So in your mind, which is better, Samoas or Thin Mints for you? I think Samoas are better, but I have so many memories tied to Thin Mints because that was the first one I tried. Like, cause no little kids are eating coconut when they're younger. It's not till you're a little older that you're like, let me try that shit. The chocolate shit is just what is everyone's go to from a young age, I think. Cause we don't have the palates at a young age to be like, oh, let me try the purple box with the coconut on it. It's when you're older, you're like, oh, that's a decent oh now point. I'm buying my own cookie. Let me try the purple shit. And you're like, damn, this is fucking banging. That's a, that's a decent point. That that's the safe one. The safe yeah. one is thin mint. And when you're growing up, it's like, oh, let's have a thin mint. Yep, because it's just straight like chocolate. Yeah, so so you think Thin Mints is going to do a Tiger Woods blowout victory? Yeah, I, I don't want it to happen. I want Samoas to put up a fight and, you know, fucking Bernie Sanders, Michigan, that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think it'll be actually close, but I could be proven totally wrong here. But I think it'll be close between Thin Mints and Samoas. 
Um, I'm very curious to see the results of this. But we got to. What are the uh, what's what are the other ones? What's that chocolatey one? Which chocolate? I mean, the chocolate and peanut butter. Oh, that one? I don't even know the name of that shit. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> chocolate and peanut butter Girl Scout cookie. The yellow box was always big too. I think it was just a plain like cookie with like the Girl Scout logo on it. <laughs> Might have been like a lemon one. Okay, that I think that one has to be on the poll. Which one was Dosey Dough? Oh, I think Dosey Dough was this shit. Is that the peanut butter joint? Hold on, I see the girl. I'm going to GirlScouts.org to read about the cookies. <laughs> um okay it says meet the cookies let's see got and they say that um cookies in different areas too or go by different names yo what the fuck they got ones i never even heard of that look banging that's what i'm saying girl scout that, like, s'mores that shit looks delicious that's a new shit i think what the fuck this is revolutionary <laughs> yo girl scout changed the fucking like like, food industry must be so pissed at the Girl Scout cookie because, like, they're supposed to be focusing on campfires and shit. But they <laughs> they low-key made the, like, most banging cookie of all time. They really did. <laughs> okay, so first of all, my mind is blown because I'm seeing some shit i never seen before. Toffee-tastic looks delicious. It's like a toffee Ooh, cookie. It's probably like a Heath bar shit. It shit looks delicious. Savannah Smiles, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds like a porn star. <laughs> I was just going to say that. That's... <laughs> That's a random ass name. <laughs> they got lemonade cookies. That looks good, but I've never seen these. Um, Dosey oh. Dos are a peanut butter cookie, but it's like a sandwich one, almost like a nutter butter type shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I the other two we're gonna put on the poll are the it's tagalongs is the one I'm thinking tag of the peanut butter one. Yep, yep, yep. So tagalongs, mm-hmm. and then the other one is the shortbread cookie. The That's, short shortbread. Is that a blue box or a yellow blue box? box. Short blue. Bl- shortbread slash trefoils. Damn, definitely like the CEO of Girl Scout got into a fight with her husband one night because he was at a strip club fortin' with a bitch named Savannah, Savannah Smiles. Savannah Smiles, hell yeah. <laughs> Savannah Smiles has sucked so many dicks. <laughs> she was like, she was like, you know what? Fuck you, and I'm stealing her name for a Girl Scout cookie. <laughs> now get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this poll is going to be good. I'm very curious to see the results of it. I do think tagalongs and the shortbread are going to get waxed, but I think yeah. it'll be close between Thin Mints and Samoas. You think it'll be a blowout. Thin Mints will win. Yeah, Thin Mints gonna going to take that shit. <laughs> Damn, I'm so curious to see the results of these shits. Okay, next we had IHOP versus Waffle House, but we got I got to ask you if you want to throw any others in there. IHOP, Waffle House, and then... Is there any other one that's like a national breakfast? Uh, oh, Denny's? But Denny's will get waxed. There's a spot called Ohop, which I fucking hate. It's um the original House of Pancakes, and it's sort of a chain, but I don't think a huge, huge chain. Nah, fuck that. And that shit was whack as fuck. So IHOP, Waffle House, and then the only other breakfast ones I could think of are like Denny's, but that shit would get whacked so hard, I'm not even going to bother putting them on the pole. Yeah, I don't think those. there's any, like, IHOP, Waffle House, would fr- Friendly's isn't in that category, right? Mm, no, I don't think it what is. category does Friendly's fall in? Because it doesn't fall into the Friday's Applebee's joint. I know. I, that I'm still, I, I still would put it in that category, even though I hear you oh, out really? that it's it's like almost like having an identity crisis because it flirts a lot with the ice cream side the of things. It's dessert, yeah. Yeah, but I, maybe I'm biased because I always used to go to Friendly's and get the meal when I was when I was a kid. Me and my Remember mom and my sister like- would go. That chicken sandwich shit they had, it was so like good. a honey, honey mustard honey. chicken sandwich. It was so ridiculously good. Oh, oh god, it was so fucking good. And they ridiculous. had the fries and like, and then you get the Sunday shit with it. Yes, that, it was so good. And that's why I'm upset that there's not that many friendlies left. Yeah, friendlies are sort friendlies of friendlies are really going away. Yeah, they didn't, you know, like maybe they're going more towards like just the dessert store exactly i say so i was hoping that maybe at some point they kind of tweak it and maybe be a little bit more like a fast food place mm-hmm. because if you put it in the category with like mcdonald's and the rest of them that shit would bl- blow them out of the water yeah like mcdonald's versus friendlies if you made friendlies like mcdonald's and that it was fast food and it's like what oh. Oh, yeah i would get fat and go there like every other day yeah friendly's so fucking good okay so we're gonna do ihop versus waffle house straight up yeah, that that's a that's a heavyweight battle right there where it could just be a one on one banger. Yeah, I think I want to say IHOP wins that battle, but there's so many more Waffle Houses. So, oh, are there really? So IHOP's I think not so, national. Yeah. I mean, I think it's national, but Waffle House is like in rest stops of like fucking North Dakota. 
It's just everywhere in the South. But there's not that many in the East. Like I've never eaten at a Waffle House, and I feel like I'd pick Waffle House in the poll, though. <laughs> because it just seems like it's so banging. Yeah, they also have more of everything, too. Whereas IHOP um, is more just breakfast. More breakfasty shit. I'm thinking Waffle I, I, House. Yeah, I think Waffle House wins that. I once saw Jada Kiss at IHOP in New York. <laughs> I saw Jada Kiss. Did oh, wait? Hold on. I don't know. I think it was my friend who saw him. Actually, was at, it me that saw him at IHOP? <laughs> no, it was my friend who saw him at Cross County. Oh yeah, I mean he's from Yonkers and yeah. he still like hangs around Yonkers. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I, I saw him and I I was like gonna go up to him, but I was like, nah. I sort of respect that he's just in IHOP right now. Apparently he's nice because I think my friend. I heard he's mad nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then we were going to do, oh, I want to set up this poll like this, the Starburst poll. I want to do pink Starburst versus any other Starburst. Yeah. Yeah. And I think pink is going to win. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Pink's winning that shit. Yeah. I think so too. Pink. Any other one. (laughs) 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 That's a funny poll. Uh, We're doing so many good polls today. And then finally, the last one. Um, why is this is from Leon? So Leon, thanks, man. Wise versus Lays versus Uts versus Ruffles. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one, right? Yeah. Now we could do the. Is poll- Doritos in there? Uh, no, it's not in there. I was because it's just like the plain old ass white y- man type of chip. Yeah, kind of. I mean, we could. <laughs> maybe this is one of those instances where like two separate polls would make sense because. <laughs> Wise versus Lays versus Uts versus Ruffles is a good poll, but then also, like, I feel like we'd want to do a poll where it's, like, regular potato chip versus sour cream and onion versus cheddar and sour barbecue, cream versus barbecue, yeah. you know? Yeah, but that there's so many types of chips, like, there's yeah, salt Yeah, then people be like, what do you mean? You mean, like, yeah, you mean like that a, one's tough. a wavy Lays or you mean, like, a Ruffle versus... Yeah, and then there's, like, fucking baked... And then there's like sun chips. There's so many fucking different types yeah, of categories. You'd need of like chips. 10 options on the poll. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be like A and then 1A, 1B. You know, since you mentioned them, I'm just going to throw this out there. I think Doritos are overrated. <sighs> I don't know, man. Like the fucking Cool Ranch Dorito sort of changes like the industry. I think we just t- it's like take it for granted because them shits have been around since 88. Well, here's my thing, though. Name any other chip, and I'd pick that over a Dorito, though. I mean, you name even salt and vinegar, I'm taking over Dorito any day. Yeah. I like salt and vin- barbecue, any chip. Uh, You're taking chip. all that over? Frito, like a cool Frito Lays, Frito? the corn chips, I'm taking those over. Pretty I much any we, chip, I, I'm taking over Dorito. I think we take Doritos for granted just because it's like, it's just... Like nacho cheese and Cool Ranch. No, nah, man. Sh- I'm telling. This is just me, and I- I'm admitting up front that I think this is an opinion that's not going to go over well yeah, with people. I think I'm- like I think the audience is probably like Kyle, sh- shut the fuck up a little bit right now. But I'm just saying for my my personal taste is that like even if they said tomorrow, I'm going over the top here. Even if they say tomorrow, Doritos is like we're we're shutting down. We're going bankrupt, and we're not going to allow anybody to make it from here on out. Like we're going to not sell the rights to make the chip. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't you would be even, tight. I wouldn't be tight, and I wouldn't even care enough to go out and buy some Doritos to have them. Like I felt like that with Twinkies, and I don't even like Twinkies that much. But I was like, I need to have Twinkies because when they said Twinkies were going out of business, it was up in the air whether or not they'd make them again. I was like, okay, I I'm going to go get some Twinkies. But Doritos, I'm just like, whatever, man, because I don't. I don't know why. I just never had a thing for Doritos. I, you know, when I was a kid, my number one chip, sour cream and onion. And yeah. that so thoroughly blew Doritos out of the water that I wouldn't even, like, if I see Doritos at a party, I'm just like, why are you here? Really, I feel like it's just such a safe buy to get some Cool Ranch because they're so different from each other that it's just easy to buy cheese and Cool Ranch. I will it's say just- this. I will say this, that among the different Doritos... I'm a nacho cheese guy over a Cool Ranch guy. Really? Yeah. No, nah, I'm the opposite. I, I love Cool Ranch. Love it's cool such ranch. a good taste. Like, so what? What chips would you pick Doritos over? That's my question to you. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's not not a lot because I, I would pick some. Yeah, any I would pick head some to barbecue. head I give you, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'd prefer the other shit. <laughs> yeah. So there's nothing better than remember like the delis. They have those like 25 cent bag of chips, like, and they have that. There's a honey barbecue. It's in like a goldish like beehive looking bag. Yep. I it's know like exactly the one you're talking about. Too. Delicious. I'd take that over Doritos any day. I would take that over. I would put that up against a lot of fucking chips. I think my favorite, I think, is now um, cheddar and sour cream, and I like the ruffled cheddar and sour cream. That's one. Yeah, of my with favorites. the with the with the waves in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, let's type <laughs> this one out. We're gonna do Wise versus Lay's versus Uts versus Ruffles, and who do you like in that? Wise versus Lay's versus Uts versus Ruffles. Wise. I think I'm a Ruffles number one. I think I'm a Lay's number one. That's funny. I have Lay's dead last. Really? I have Ruffles, and then it's like a tie between Wise and Uts, and then Lay's is last. Well, um, Ruffles is mainly the, with the ridges and the shit, right? Yes. Yeah, I think I like those. Yeah, but, I feel like Lay's might crush in this poll just on name recognition alone. Exactly. They make so many different types of shit. Yeah, that people are just going to be like, it's got to be Lay's. That shit is everywhere, yeah. Uts, and I think Uts is going to get rocked in this poll, too. Even oh, though, Uts is going to get smacked. Even though they make a really good chip, man. They make a really good chip, Uts. Like, when I was at the store uh, recently, I was like, if I'm mm-hmm. getting chips, I'm getting Uts today. And the reason why I was like, I'm getting Uts is because mm-hmm. nobody's like, I'm going to get some Uts. And yeah, I, was like, I know. Fuck all y'all. I'm gonna get some Uts. <laughs> yeah, Uts is like Uts is just a weird brand. It's like it's like it's like re, like Reebok or And One or some <laughs> shit like that. Like it's like an And One, like trying to make a banging ass shoe, and you and like you could be like, yo, that's a fucking hot ass shoe, and then someone could just be like, yeah, but it's And One though. <laughs> like And One now, because And One used to be hot when they had the, the ESPN like Street Ball. Yeah, that's when it was hot. That's when N One was hot for sure. Okay, so let's set this poll up. But is Uts national? Because it might just be like an East Coast shit. Um, I don't even know if it's like a whole universal thing. We're about to find out. <laughs> if it comes in with yeah. like 1%, that shit is only East Coast. I think motherfuckers are going to be like, I, I've never even seen an Uts cookie or, or cookie. <laughs> well, I've never seen an Uts cookie either. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Wise, Lays, Uts, and <clears throat> Ruffles. Okay. Should be funsies, and that's the last poll. I like how we're halfway through the show, and it's like, we just finished the polls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, can't wait to see the results of all these. All right, next, uh, what do I want to talk about? Oh, well, let's Joe Rogan, son. Joe Rizzy Rizzy Rogan. Um, Wild, you sent me that shit, man. That, I that was what's up. Either. No, see, I, I, was, uh, I had clicked on a video. I was on YouTube watching something, and mm-hmm. the video came up on the sidebar. And it was a short clip of Rogan's show with Steven Crowder. Now, I'm mm-hmm. not a Steven Crowder fan, obviously. But I was like, it was a short video. So I was like, let me just check it and see. He's a it. conservative? Yeah, very, oh, okay. very conservative. Like, very <clears throat> doctrinaire, down the line, right winger. Um, mm-hmm. So I clicked on it. It was only like a 10-minute video. And mm-hmm. in the video, Steven Crowder, um, uh, or Joe Rogan asks Steven Crowder, in all in all earnesty, like he was genuinely curious what the answer was. He was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, like who are the the popular left wing uh, YouTube hosts?" And Stephen Crowder basically was like, "I don't know." Yeah, crickets. He's he's not watching that shit. He, well, he he knows of me. He's been mm-hmm. trying to get me to go on his show for a long time. Um, oh, seriously? Yeah. What does um, he just want to debate you on shit? Like, yeah, he's one of those guys who's like, uh-huh. "Come on, and I'll berate you." Um, yeah. And, you know, so Joe asked, and then he said, I really don't know. And then I saw that, and I was a little annoyed by that, because, no, you do know, Stephen. Like, you could have said my name, Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure he knows of other ones. I'm sure he knows of David Pakman and some other ones. And I think they were talking about the Young Turks, and so so Joe was asking who other than Cenk is a big left-wing YouTube host. Mm -hmm. And so I just saw that, and I was like, I'm just going to tweet at Joe and answer his question and give him not just my show, which yeah, I that did. Was, that was what's up, that you put other people on that shit too, man. Yeah, because th- those are popular A lot of people don't do that. Hosts. Yeah, those are popular hosts. They have an, a, a decent following for sure. So yeah. I said, hey, uh, Joe, you know, there's my show, Secular Talk, which is a left-wing show on YouTube. And then, you know, there's Jimmy Dore. Uh, there's David Pakman. And, and I listen. Humanist shit. 
I listed a few others, however many I listed, mm-hmm. and then um, I sent it, and then I didn't I didn't expect to hear anything back because everybody knows that, you know. I thought if I was gonna get on his show, I would have gotten on his show already by now. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really <clears throat> expect to hear back from him, but it was like the next day he, he had DM me. I'm like, whoa, what? I yeah, was like, holy shit! I was surprised. That that was my reaction when you sent me that shit too, because I I didn't see the tweet. I haven't been really uh, on Twitter. My reaction was like, shut the fuck up! Like, yeah, was... I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. And so, um, <clears throat> he said that he had seen a video of mine uh, that he liked, where it was I was talking about fundamentalist Christians who were talking about Trump, and they were it was like a right wing watch clip where the the fundamentalist Christians were really ridiculous, and they were mm-hmm. saying how like Trump's a believer now and. He wasn't a believer before, but he believes in Jesus now. Oh, my God. And they were acting like, I don't have a past anymore because I accepted Jesus. How about you? And they were just saying ridiculous things, and so I broke it down in the video. And so... So he watched that video. He watched that video. He liked that video. He he told me, oh, I really enjoyed that. And then he said, um, let's set something up. I was like, okay. That's just dope. <laughs> you tell me. And then he said, uh, the date for everybody, I think it's the 24th, right? 27th i like how i forgot already <laughs> i just want to give everybody the date so they know let me see if i could find it you show up on the wrong date you're like it was good <laughs> he's like sorry we don't have you on today kyle we have bill gates today yeah i'm like what i think that's what people respect about him so much it's just he's down to earth and like you know there's no like well, there's that's, no barriers. Well, it's that's just exactly, like, I like this guy. I'm going to talk to him. That's exactly what I appreciated so much is that he he's the only person I've ever dealt with who was like, okay, here's the date. Here's the time. Yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, all right. I, there we go. That's fine. And by the way, for everybody, it is f- February 27th at 11 a.m. That's when I'll be on Joe Rogan's show. But that shit's gonna be fire. He was really nice, really straightforward. Sh- shot out the time. I was like, "Let's do it." Yeah, and that's. And, I mean, that's why you two are gonna get along because you're the same motherfucker. Like you've said at all times when you're buying a car or doing anything, you're just like, "I want to go in somewhere. This is what I want." What well, like? How does it happen? You know, and like fuck all that bullshit noise. Like, oh, it does this, and did you see the right tire spins a little extra than the left tire? It's like. Yeah, I like that car. I want that car. Tell me how much it is. Like, yeah, he seems like it's just like I like you. I want you on my show. Here's a time. Let's keep it moving. And, yeah. that, and that's how shit gets done. And that's how, like, the best things happen when you just fucking do it and you don't think about it. You don't talk too much. And then like, he's like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, you know? I, I hate salesmanship. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it seems like he does too. He's just like, here's the date. Here's the time. Let's go. So yeah. anyway, I'm really excited. I'm actually I'm curious to see, hmm. um how his audience will react because he has a very he's got a huge audience that's obvious um but they've been i feel like they've been receptive across the board like they've given good reactions to some people on the right wing yeah uh but then they've also given reactions where they said fuck you to people on the right wing like what's that guy's name i don't want to fuck up his name i think his name is Charles. Well, he had that crazy guy Alex Jones on or whatever, right? Charles, he's friends. He he's known him for a long time. Oh, really? Um, and so he's been friends with him for a long time. And yeah, he had that podcast was <laughs> bonkers <laughs> to say the least. Wasn't he? Didn't he try like smoking weed or something like that? And, I don't like, know he if just Alex went off the did. wall even more. Oh, and the guy's name is Charles Johnson. He's a right wing journalist and um, journalist. I, mean, I use that term loosely. And he went on Joe's show. And his audience was like, Meh, fuck this guy, and dis- oh, massively really? disliked him. So anyway, my point is, he's had right-wingers on where the audience has loved them. He's had right-wingers on where the audience has hated them. But by yeah. the same token, you know, he's had Abby Martin on a bunch of times. And I think most of the time she's gone on, the audience has been very receptive to her. So it's like, and Abby Martin's, of course, a left-wing journalist. So He had um he had the guy that you know, uh, TJ Kirk, was on there a couple times, right? Oh, yeah, right? Sh- yep, TJ Kirk was on there, sure. <clears throat> He's not, uh, I wouldn't describe TJ as a left-wing, and he wouldn't describe himself as a left-wing oh, really? host. He's just more of a, he's just like a cultural critic, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Almost like a skeptic. Um, so like he's, he's not different about shit. Yeah, he doesn't. He's not primarily news focused. News focused. So he's not. What is he? What is his thing? What everything. Is he He'll, just oh, really? Cultural stuff. He'll talk about. Oh. I mean, sure, he does some politics for sure. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I, that's not his main focus. Okay. Um, but yeah, there. Anyway, so my point is that there. He's got a very, the the guests on his show, very big time. Yeah. And the yeah. reactions very big time. So I'm very curious to see how they'll feel about what I have to offer. Yeah, but regardless of what they think, I mean, like you. Yeah, you, there's nothing you, you could do. To your guns, like yeah, you there's know, nothing like, you could do about it. If they don't, if they for whatever reason, you know, hit with the mass dislike, it's like, okay, what am I gonna do? It is what yeah. it is. But yeah, you just hope a, that they're receptive, and we'll see. I, you know, it is what it is. But either way, I'm excited and I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. you gonna be there, bitch? <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm. I'm fucking. I'm just pumped to like be there to support you, just because like. This is your shit, and I just want to make it seem like we're just back in fucking New Rochelle kicking it. Like, yeah. well, that's the thing. You're gonna, you'll make me feel a lot more at ease for sure. You know, going if I were to go through that whole thing, just being there in general, talking about California, yeah, it'd be a little, it'd be a little bit system overload for me because everybody it's, knows it's me. It's overwhelming I'm almost, for anybody. Yeah, I'm in like my bubble in a way. You know what I mean? Like I'm so, mm-hmm. I. I I just do what I do for my show, and I'm kind mm-hmm. of like a very, I'm conservative by nature, and that I'm rigid and kind of how I'm scheduled and stuff. Mm-hmm. So when you break that schedule a little bit, it feels very foreign to me. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so mm-hmm. you know you got to try to find your comfort zone somehow when you're outside of that schedule, what you're used to, and then yep. also plus everybody knows how I how I am with flying, so. I, I, I know that's the first thing Molly said to me when yeah, that was she's she like how is he gonna be with like just the traveling made a, I made a doctor's appointment and I'm going to get uh, Xanax <laughs> well I'm getting a checkup but I'm also gonna be like listen I'm flying and pff, I you need to drug me the fuck up I don't, you better you can give me Xanax you want to write me a prescription for Ambien while you're at it you give me whatever the fuck you want to give me to get yeah. me from point A to point B did you ever have a bad experience on flying or some shit or um, just so, I know Vegas you've had some some turbulence, right? So, it's funny because yeah, so it's funny <laughs> because most of the times in my life I've flown, no, it wasn't bad. Mm-hmm. Um I've flown, let's try to count the number of times I've flown, maybe 3 or 4 times to Florida when I was a kid with the family for a vacation there. Mm-hmm. One time to Wyoming when I was a kid, my parents took us there. One time to Las Vegas, two Two times to Las Vegas, once to Puerto Rico. I've probably in my life I've probably flown ten to fifteen times, which is not a lot, but yeah. you know. But I have flown basically. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Mo- the overwhelming majority of that was when I was younger. Um, mm-hmm. The last time I went on a flight, or it was either the last time or two times ago, I had gone to Vegas and. I flew there, no problem, everything fine. On the way back, we had to do a connecting flight. I think the connecting flight was to Phoenix. Mm -hmm. And we were on a smaller plane. And we hit some turbulence. When I tell you it was... (sighs) When I tell you it was mild turbulence, though, I mean it was mild in the sense that other people would be like, that. It's that's super mild. But listen, here's the thing that that flipped me the fuck out. Every flight I had ever been on to that point, Mm -hmm. I must have hit the lotto because I didn't ever experience any turbulence at all Mm -hmm. and so the first time i ever experienced turbulence i thought the plane was going down (laughs) because nobody tells you nobody's like hey listen you know what turbulence is right like yeah you can't explain a fucking like shaking feeling yeah it's gonna feel like the plane is not in control that's what it feels like yeah it feels like you know how sometimes when like when you're driving or something and you'll get the wind gust yeah exactly it's like that's what turbulence feels like Mm -hmm. nobody sits you down and explains that to you yeah. And then I, having all the times previously that I had flown in my life and not had a problem, never experienced turbulence. I didn't even know that was a thing. So when I first experienced it, I'm like, is the plane going down? Like, I was looking around at people to gauge their reaction, and everybody looked normal as fuck. Yeah. Everybody was just, like, reading their shit. I'm like, why aren't you guys flipping out? I was this close to just reaching the person next to me and hugging them. <laughs> and being like, this is our last moments. So that, anyway, it shit is yeah, that shit is like the shaking sometimes isn't bad when it's just going up and down. But yeah, you're right. That feeling where it like goes off path a little bit, yeah. that like big wind gust where you don't feel like the plane is just going straight. You're like that one felt a little weird. Yeah, because it's like you, we live in fucking 2018, man. Like you, do you really haven't figured out a way to not make this shit feel like it's gonna crash on a regular ass flight? Yeah. 
like, and then of course the consequences of a plane crash is like, oh, you're all gonna die. So like, when you once you get that thought in your head of like, oh my god, we might go down, it's like, no, yeah, it's super it's- scary. I get, I got scared to my core. It might have been the most scared I've ever been on a plane in that instance. Now, obviously, the thing now is. I get that, that now that's what turbulence feels like, so I'll be able to deal with it a lot better just logically knowing that, mm-hmm. even even though it's still going to feel like shit. But the other thing that I'm worried about is I had uh, the last time I went on a boat. So every time on my life I had ever gone on a boat up to that point, never got sick under any circumstance. In fact, my dad used to have a boat, a small mm-hmm. fishing boat. When I was a kid, he would take me out and we'd go fishing. Never had a problem. In fact, I literally got my captain's license when I was like a kid. I was like 13 or some shit. Yeah, I think I, I remember when you got that shit. And I had a captain's license, which is crazy. So like I was mm-hmm. a captain of a fucking ship as, as a kid. So I knew a lot about it. I was out there all the time. I never felt sick. Well, the last time I went uh, on a boat, it was in Montauk. It was fishing. The skies were gray. It was a little stormy. And, mm-hmm. the, and the waves were kind of bad. I got so fucking seasick, man. The first time I stepped on the boat, the second I stepped on it and the boat like moved a little bit. Yeah. For some reason, something was wrong with like my brain that day. And it's like my mind was like, no, no. Like it wanted to be control. It wanted to control the fact that they're shaking. And so it's like your brain is like trying to like level itself out. Yeah. And I couldn't do it. And the result is when you're trying to feel like you're level, but you're all over the place. That's when you're just like, I'm going to throw up and yeah you probably make yourself more nauseous exactly so they say they say i guess dramamine like there's a there's a drug you can take that prevents you from feeling that yeah but is that is that also for planes or is that just for for boats i think so i think they give you that shit for like roller coasters too right like when you feel all dizzy coming off the roller coaster i feel like dramamine is like some shit that just helps with dizziness and nauseous and all that stuff but then i also heard that, that it makes you feel really tired too is that true have you ever had it or no? No, I haven't had it. But I'm because you're mean, pretty I'm, good with all that stuff, right? Flying and all that shit. Yeah, flying. I'm okay. I, I I'm not good with boats at all. Like, um, my boy had his bachelor party in Key West, and they did a whole fishing thing on the boat. And like, if it's just simple, like we went out onto the dock and like just threw yeah, the fish, yeah, like, that's, yeah, that's yes, okay. Mm-hmm. But then you start having beers, and then the shit shaking more, and yep. your whole perception is thrown off. I start, I get a little dizzy. I got to like lay down. Yeah, I was, that's what happened the last time I felt so sick. I literally didn't move. I would lay down and I was just like closing my eyes and I was like, just roll with it, man. Just like deal with it, deal with it. And it was But when you try and close your eyes and like, like you said, when you try and think like, hey, counteract this, like, yes, don't be nauseous. That's That's probably what makes it it worse. Yeah, exactly. Like when you, when you're drunk as fuck and you try to lay down in your bed. I wasn't even drunk. I was just miserable. No, no, what I'm saying, like, when you're drunk and you lay down. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the room's spinning. And yep. you're like, you could tell yourself, like, yo, just tell you, like, the room's like not spinning. Like, you're in the same place, you idiot. Like, you're trying yeah. to tell yourself. Yeah. Nope, that shit is worse. God, I'm so bad with, like, regular shit that other people do all the time. Like, flying is nothing to so many people. They just fly. Yeah, and that's it. I know. Like, I'm you so envious imagine- of just, like, a flight attendant. Like, I, I could yeah. never do that. Could you imagine how much like Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders flew with the last yeah. election? Like you're always flying. You're never yeah. not flying. Yeah, that's true. You're in but Washington- their fucking flights, they've got like a bet on that shit. Like, I mean, they still got to go through turbulence and shit, right? Like, I guess they're so, right? The same yeah, air like, that we are. <laughs> of course. I can't believe they don't have a fucking fix for that shit. Anyway, I'm going to ask the doctor and I'll probably do some research on my own about what the best way is to counteract all this shit. If I have to take Dramamine and Xanax on the flight, I'm going to get loaded up on the drugs and I'm going to be like, yes, I feel good now. Yeah, that shit will definitely help you. For the <laughs> or first, just something to knock you the fuck out on the plane. For the first time, I'll be flying JetBlue, which I hear good things about. Oh, JetBlue is good. I mean, if you could, are, are you into like watching the TV and shit to pass time? Anything to help me fucking yeah, pass time. You'll be good then because like you could throw something on the TV. Like if you get a banger on TV, there's a good movie on or some shit and you're just locked in. Well, you sometimes that, won't even realize that. Like it, you're I was going to say, it's funny to think of it in time frames like that because mm-hmm. if you think about it, I just have to watch two Rogan podcasts and I'm there. Yep. <laughs> That's yeah. it. That's the flight from New York to LA. Two Rogan podcasts and I'm there. Yep. So I used to do that with – um. With my brother, when he when I would visit him in Dominican Republic, he was living out there, and he'd be like, "Yeah, I got to go to class for four hours or some shit." And there was a there was what was that dance movie? It was um, Dirty Dancing. 
<laughs> it was like uh, I want to say oh, what the fuck? Like, like Steve Harvey was in it, and he was like the judge. Um, Save the last dance. Was that it? Steve Harvey. No, that was with uh, Julia Stiles. It was um, Julia Stiles was in that shit. Oh, Steve Harvey. oh, 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 hold what on. That was the name of it. It's um, you got served. You got served. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was like I knew every part of the movie, so my brother would just be like, "Yeah, just watch like four You Got Serves, and I'll be back." Like he would like, and I'll be like, "Okay, that's not that bad." So I'd watch that shit just on. I think I had it on a PSP. So if you can cut things up in the time yeah, frame of like show, that, that's the trick. That's the yeah. trick because I never used to do that, and then it's torture. It's mm-hmm. fucking torture. And by mm-hmm. the way, the closest I feel I've ever been to torture in my life was when I was on that boat, and when really? I went, yeah, it, it li- a- after. Like 30 minutes, and we were out there half the day. But after uh-huh. 30 minutes, I was like, this is torture. I'm being tortured right now. Yeah, and that's what and it you felt can't, like. You can't like go back like you're in the middle of the fucking water. And all my mind wanted to do was be level. That's all my mind wanted to do was to not have the blah, 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 oh. blah. And it just doesn't stop, man. It's a miserable feeling. And you're thinking like if somebody somehow built a platform next to me and I could just step off the boat and stand on the platform, I'd be good. Like <laughs> here, I'm flat on the platform. I'm good now. Mm-hmm. That and that's the thing is the second I got off the boat, immediately good. Yeah. But when I was on the boat, I was like, ah. Yeah. So do you get seasick now? You think if you went on the boat again? Well, that's the thing is that I'm I'm super scared of it. And the other thing is I don't enjoy fishing anymore. So yeah. it's not like a thing I do anyway. There's no upside really to it in my mind. When I was a kid, I enjoyed it. My dad used to take me and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. now it's just I don't. The idea of it doesn't even mildly make me entertain me, you know? Yeah. So yeah. the da- potential downside of being tortured and the upside of doing something that's not that fun, I'm like, fuck that. I'm not doing that shit. I feel like people, like, from where we were from just never really got into fishing just because it was just, like, we were on the East Coast. Like, you had to go to Long Island and, like, it's just, I don't know. It never was a thing for me. And then, well, I like, did when the they sound. went out for the— We fished in the Sound, oh. me and my dad, which is pretty close. Yeah. Um, But you're right. Like, usually people who fish are more— on in cities and towns that are right on the water and mm-hmm. like fishing is a thing there like if you grow up in montauk you're gonna yeah. fish all the time yeah, yeah yeah um yeah it's definitely like a lifestyle thing i don't begrudge it if people want to do it by all means have fun but it's it's just not for me yeah but i can go on a cruise like i've been on royal caribbean cruises well, and i've slept like a motherfucking baby on well i was gonna shits. say i was i actually was looking that up the other night because i was curious i was like do you feel the waves on cruise ships I googled that. <laughs> so let me ask you: You've right? been on it. Have you felt a crew, uh, the waves on a cruise ship, or do you, do you just feel like you're? It's not like you're in a house or something. Yeah, no, I think it's like it's on such big of a fucking like massive boat that it's. I, I, I don't remember feeling the waves. No, because I didn't get seasick or anything. And they say when you sleep on a cruise ship, you you get better sleep because you are still like rocking a little bit. Oh. So it's sort of like you're rocking to sleep. So it's just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit so where you don't even really notice it. When you're walking, how does it feel when you're walking on the just deck? Just like you're just on like a like just, a like you're in a building or some shit. Wow. That's yeah. so bizarre. Yeah. Because you're right, it's so big that you don't feel it's imperceptible. It's like yep. the boat is moving the water, not the water moving the boat. Yep. But wow. then if you were to play basketball on a cruise, yeah. I try to play basketball a lot, can't do it. Really? The fucking wind, like if you shoot a regular jump shot, when the when the boat is moving, that shit is like you have to shoot it <laughs> miles to the left for that shit to like. The wind hooks back. it. Oh the shit! The wind hooks it like crazy, but you don't really feel the wind like that. Right. Just normal. Wow. But the basketball going in the air, that shit. They should you put, can't put the play court basketball inside. Football. They should put it inside, and then it'd be good. Yeah, I'm sure they have that shit. Actually, I don't even know. I wonder. Like, I saw a video the other day, I didn't watch it, but I just saw the, like, the headline, like, watch these wild waves on a cruise ship. I wonder how bad the waves have to be before you feel it on the ship. Yeah. But the Titanic be... probably wasn't a, some good waves. <laughs> well, the Titanic hit an iceberg. Yeah, but true. Imagine being on that shit. Oh, my God. And then they're like, women and children only. And I'm like, fuck. <laughs> I feel like, fuck that. They say that on the plane. They're like, please put the mask on the kid first. I'll be like... <laughs> Fuck that! I'll do my shit, and then I'll get to the kid. <laughs> Some comedian had a skit when they were like, um, when the flight attendant goes into the front and does their fake little like demonstration shit. Mm-hmm. They're like, "Where are they actually showing you?" When they're like, "The exits are this way." Yeah, it's like, like okay. So if something happens like, when we're up there, and I gotta jump out and die. I know. 
<laughs> I'm going to remember that you yeah. were like... Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, oh, what's... And even, like, even if you know where the door is, really, we're going to be able to get it on our first try? I can barely yeah. open a door that's meant to be opened, never mind one yeah. that's, like, locked shut. Locked. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that on the news, actually, a couple months ago. A dude tried to, like, open up the emergency door, and I, like... I've always thought about that. Like, what's stopping someone who sits in the emergency section? Like, fuck, like, terrorism bringing some shit on the plane. Like, just, just open, open the, the fucking door. emergency door. <laughs> Most people that, that like, want to commit suicide want to just hurt themselves. So, yeah, you'd have to have a terrorist do that. Yeah. And I wonder but, like, what they... Like, you, you don't... You could go through security fucking chilling. Fine. I wonder what would happen if they open the door when you're up really high. Does it... The whole cabin depressurizes and then you're all in trouble, right? Yeah, I mean... Like the air is like, too thin up there and shit and too cold. Yeah, like when you watch the movies and there's like the door pops and off. They, it's just like. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, that's like scary. People just go, <laughs> yeah, I know. Because I mean like people sit right next to the emergency door and it's like. It's got to. I mean, it's probably. You fucking really scare me right before we have to fly. <laughs> <laughs> nah, oh, good. shit. I'm going to be sitting there thinking about it. I'm going to try to get the seat next to the emergency door now just so I know we're good. It, oh man who i think it was jerry seinfeld and he was like the pilot gets on the thing and he's like um well we're gonna be cruising up at a 562 l altitude and we're gonna be going through clear skies it's like yeah okay fine we do whatever you gotta do like i don't care about all that yeah shit. really like, what's that about just go like yeah like you don't need to tell me that we're we're going this route i'm on the flight for so a reason because <laughs> imagine you get in like a uber and the uber driver turns around and is like he starts so telling you the direction. The roads are clear, and it looks like we're gonna, it's about 72 degrees outside, and we're going to start driving any minute now. It's like, why are you doing this? You can just drive. <laughs> yeah, can, I, I know the weather. I was just outside. Like, <laughs> like I know what, I know Miami's going to be fucking 75 degrees. You don't got to tell me that shit. <laughs> oh, that's so true, and I never thought about that. I like that observation. You don't have to give some fucking play-by-play. Um. So I, you know what I did? I thought this this move was genius, and I'm mad that I didn't do it earlier. But so there, I, every time now that I go to take a shower, I'll be listening to a podcast, and I'm like, I want to keep listening to this. And mm-hmm. so I hop in the shower and I put the the volume all the way up, but I still don't hear it. Like I hear it a little bit when I'm in the shower, but I don't hear it. Hear it? I was like, fuck, man, this is annoying. So anyway, I just went on. Uh, I went on Amazon and just bought like a random speaker. And I thought it would, I thought I'm like a genius now. I was like, this is the most brilliant thing I've ever did. Because I put it in the shower, or I, just like yeah. So I put it like right there, obviously out of the anywhere near the water, obviously. Yeah. But um, but I crank it up, and then I hopped in there. I'm like, I could hear this shit perfectly clear now. And so now it's like I, I I'm like I'm gonna take a long ass shower. When I was younger, I used to take long ass showers, and then I, at a certain point, I like stopped and I just took regular showers. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like gonna revert. To taking long ass showers, and before anybody gets mad at me, understand I'm not in a drought over here. <laughs> I know that I'm like people listening in Cape Town, South Africa, like fuck you, motherfucker. We don't even have any water to drink, <laughs> dude. There's nothing better than a long shower. I was in San Diego when they were in the drought, and like the hotel was like, try and conserve water, take shortish. I was like, fuck have you ever that, had dude. that? I've never had that here. What? We've never had that in this area. They've never like said a, like you need no. to restrict water use. Like we've always had. Knock yeah, on because wood. it rains Knock and all, on all that the shit. wood in the world. <laughs> yeah, because I guess we're in a rainy area. I guess relatively speaking, compared to other places. Yeah, but even outside, there's never been a time I think in New York or anything when they were like, "Don't use this. Don't use too much of this." But because apparently, of that. they get that all the time in a lot of places. Like if you live in Arizona or some shit, <laughs> all the time they're like, "Water shortage. Don't do this. Don't do this." Yeah. Yeah, it's a real thing. That was the first time I saw it. We checked into the hotel, and there was like a fucking like it was like a, a big cardboard sign, and like, it was take like short showers. Yeah, take short showers. That's so and, scary. Like, reduce this, and I was like, that's such a stark example of like how civilization is on borrowed time. It's like yeah. yeah, when the water runs out, we're all fucked. So I'm just gonna let you know right now, like just be quick with your shower. It's like whoa, uh, th- this seems like a major problem that maybe we should put be putting all of our focus towards fixing. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> like, real, have, dude. I think in uh, in when I read that article about how Cape Town, South Africa is going to run out of water, they were talking about how in the that area they were working on desalination plants, which is you take salt water in the ocean and you take all the salt out of it and make it clean, fresh water. And apparently, they I think people have, guys, correct me if I'm wrong on this, everybody listening, but I think they have the technology to do it, but it's just really, really expensive. 
And th- when you do it, you don't get that much of the fresh water yet. But it's like, that should be one of the things that we are working on. Like, our priorities are so fucked up. How the fuck did we come up with a with a bomb that could blow up the fucking world years yeah. and years and decades ago, right? But when it comes to making salt water fresh water, everybody's like, we'll get there eventually. Like, no, bitch, go work on it now. This is the one you should have figured out decades ago. Yeah, I agree. Or fucking like a robot that you could actually fuck. Like, those scientists should have... <laughs> I thought yeah. I saw something once. There was like... They put all these like silver ball things in like the water and ugh, I, I saw like a video it was like one of those quick like npr videos yeah. that's mm-hmm. two minutes and it's like we're the people are now trying to do this it's like they took all these like silver balls i don't know what the fuck they were and they dumped them in the water and they're like these waters help make clear- it clean yeah yes. shit well they have some things like like uh they have certain straws that could not it doesn't desalinate water but it makes fresh water that's dirty clean and I know that uh, Jimmy Carter, his foundation, went to Africa and handed out a lot of these filter straws. So when people drink oh, water okay. that's contaminated, they no longer get sick because the filter straw fixes it. And they sell those straws. You could just buy that straw probably in a bunch of places now where, like, let's say for whatever reason you go hunting or whatever and then you get lost yeah. out there in the woods and, like, oh, shit, you don't have anything to drink. Like, if you have one of these straws, you could just find a fucking puddle of dirty water on the ground and sip it, and it'll be clean water. Because that's it pretty filters amazing. It. Yeah, it is amazing. And this is that's why, you know, Jimmy Carter's foundation, they were able to basically eliminate guinea worm, which is, you know, a parasite that you get from drinking t- contaminated uh, water. So it's like, holy shit, this is like a big deal, number one. Number two, shouldn't they be mass producing these fucking straws everywhere? Like, yeah. it's, it seems to me like a no-brainer. Like, this is great. This is wonderful. But again, that's not where we put our focus because people aren't going to make a shitload of money by saving the world. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure, like, even with fucking batteries, you don't think Duracell has a battery that could just last forever? Well, I've always thought about that with the with your cell phone because it's like, yeah. really? You've been able to update the technology so much to the point where I could talk to my fucking phone. Hey, Siri. Blow me. <laughs> yeah. I'd never speak to you that way. What'd you say? I can't do I'd it that way? I'd never speak to you that way. That's what Siri <laughs> just said. Um, but, so I have a robot sitting right next to me right now that will respond and just had a fucking conversation with me. Or you we- can call someone in like North, so, yeah. like fucking Iran. Yeah. But, <laughs> but you can't create a battery that doesn't fucking go off in half a day? You're just liars. You're lying to me. Yep. Stop and lying it. to me. <laughs> There's probably fucking cures for cancer and AIDS and all that shit. I don't know. Like, okay, I don't know about that. I feel like... You don't think there's a cure for cancer? Like, some shit that is just like, yeah, do this. I, we just can't okay. tell anybody. I, I, like, half agree with you on your overall point. I don't think there's a cure for cancer. But I feel like there's a lot of shit that we know could save the world, mm-hmm. but it's not being done because the way we do it now is profitable and people have vested interest in keeping it that way. So, like, you're right. Like, I'm sure there are some things where there are better solutions. But mm-hmm. we haven't done it because there's a lot of people making money based off the way shit is already going. Yeah, it's like, so fucked up. Climate change is the perfect example of that because it's like, okay, we know what we have to do. It's not a question. We have to get off fossil fuels. Not mm-hmm. that difficult. Get off fossil fuels. We know that's the answer. So it's just how do you do that? Well, we're not even like moving in that direction and we're not moving in that direction because oil companies have so much money and so much power that they keep buying governments all around the world and making it so that we prevent any real movement towards getting to renewable energy. And it's like, okay, well then that's kind of like what you're talking about with the cure for cancer thing. Because it's like the cancer is climate change. The solution is renewable energy, but we're not doing the solution because we're, we're hooked on the fossil fuels. Yeah. It's scary shit, man. That's yeah. really scary. It, it, yeah, it's fucking scary that they're, yeah. Ugh. Ugh. That's um, weird. So I, I get weirded out. I, I, I drove by so many factories this weekend that, like, all that smoke and shit going in the air. Oh, yeah. It just looks so bad. Yeah, when I, when I drive to uh, through Jersey, certain parts of Jersey, mm-hmm. man, it looks bad. There's one area. Oh, you, Jersey's real bad. Yeah. yeah. First of all, the smell. You yeah. smell like you're inside a fat man's asshole in certain yeah. parts of New Jersey. And you could really smell it. It's not like, oh, Jersey smells, it's a dump, it's a shithole. No, you drive into Jersey and it really smells. Your windows will be up. You won't have the air on. 
and you'll just get hit with the scent of a fat dude's asshole. And you're like, this, I don't understand. Why am I smelling a fat dude's asshole all up in my face? And then you drive through, like, do you know the area that looks like a Star Wars city um, in Jersey? Like, you got all the lights. By the Meadowlands? It's like the chemical plants or some shit. Yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it's just like, all fucking, like, empty fields and swamplands. Yeah, and they got, like, chemical factories and shit. Mm -hmm. And you're right. There's areas where they're emitting some sort of smoke, and you're like, that shit is giving us all cancer. That shit looks even worse now because it's, like, so cold and brisk outside yeah. that... Like, it's just going like it's just so much in the air, and like I, I think I was driving somewhere, and the sunset was like beautiful, and I was like, that shit will look really nice if there wasn't all that fucking smoke and like whatever the fuck comes out of those factory like. Uh, well, apparently in L.A. in like the eighties, the 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 pollution was so bad that people couldn't see that there were mountains like right there, but then Man. when they finally cleaned it up and like had more environmental pro-environment policies mm -hmm. and people started seeing the mountains they were like holy shit <laughs> this is <laughs> like, beautiful that's how bad it was isn't that crazy that that's how bad it got well it's even worse that um i think i, I saw this on more like a while ago um there's some of that bad stuff that you're breathing in that you can't even see that like they put like a like some uh, x-ray light or something like that and they're like you're breathing all this in like this is from a factory and like all this like stuff i don't know something was like well, overflowing or to be fair they do that with uh have you ever seen a black light used in uh in, oh yeah on like a bedroom put sheet? it on any bed and it's like you see eight places where somebody nutted you, do you see remember that three show places on MTV? somebody threw up it what was show? like oh i don't remember the name of the show but it was like the girlfriend used to go to like like three guys houses and she had like this um briefcase and then she would like pull the black light out Oh, oh my god, no, I never saw that, but that sounds oh, you, terrible. Oh, you had to have seen that show. Oh. It was like a big show back in the day. Oh. <laughs> I can't think of the name of it, but there would be like a girl, and it was like some dating show. <laughs> and before she went on the date with them, she would go like raid their bedrooms. God damn. And she had like this briefcase that had all this shit in it. And like one of the things you could do was like look at their the black bed. Dust. And everybody had stains, I bet. Everybody had stains oh. on their shit. <laughs> Speaking of MTV shows. Hey, you remember the MTV show where they just used to show people's limbs breaking? Like, that was the whole point of the show. It was called, like... Not like Jackass or something, right? No, it came out, I think, just after Jackass. They were trying to, like, copy the success of Jackass. I hmm? think it was called, like, Fractured or Cracked or something. Oh, no. I, ugh, I can't watch that shit. No, I can't watch it either, but... I, Scarred, it was called. Scarred. And the, sh the show was legit, just people, like... I'm going to read you the wiki thing right now. Scarred. Oh. Uh, Scarred is a television program that debuted on MTV in uh, April 10, 2007. Each episode of Scarred, several real-life risk-takers share the stories of how they were scarred or injured while attempting Jesus. dangerous stunts on primarily skateboards, but occasionally inline skates, skis, snowboards, and bikes. It, yeah, it was literally just... The whole show was like... Here's where I break my fucking femur, bro. And then you oh. see a guy like skateboarding and you see his, you see his shit like that. It's like, why? I don't why know how people would, get off on that shit. That's what I was going to say. Like, how the fuck did, I mean, I don't think the show lasted long. So I think everybody kind of had the same reaction of like, what the fuck are we doing here watching this? Like, at least with Jackass, it was also funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it was yeah, pranks yeah, and cranky. it was kind of funny. Yeah. But mm -hmm. this was just like, here, bro, look, I almost broke my neck. <laughs> Even Rob Deerdeck's thing, like they, they, it's sort of the same type of shit where they follow, like watch. What's the name of his uh, thing? Robin Big. That was the old no, one no, no. Uh, he's got the other one where like the people sit on the couch and he stands on like the keyboard oh, and like. Oh yeah, I forget the name of that, but that one's still on the air, right? I, I think sometimes, yeah, like MTV Two or something like that. Um. Oh, <sighs> never mind. I, I was looking. I was gonna say there's eight seasons, but no, this is just that number of episodes. Let me see how many seasons there were is that of scarred this is scarred it's more than i thought oh okay it's only two seasons they did two seasons and then people they were have like, so many weird pilots of shows mtv it's just like they fucking have just a grab bag You're like let's try this let's get a 13 year old pregnant and see if people want to watch it <laughs> <laughs> i haven't um I, I heard like a bunch of bad things about them like they they didn't like they they say like no we don't they don't pay people really mm -hmm. they just kind of like or they don't pay them well or whatever they're like we don't we create stars like this is where you yeah. start and then you go elsewhere kind of thing i feel like that happens with a um 
there was a show I really liked on History Channel, American Restoration. Never uh, saw that. They like you bring them an old Coke machine and like they they do it all up so it's brand new again. And like they used to do some really cool shit, and it was just like a good show. But then that I saw a while ago, he like tweeted like History Channel's not paying us any money, and like History Channel's shit is probably like yo, we're putting you on fucking History Channel. You're a famous show now. People check out your spot when they come to Vegas. So I mean, it, it is a how much like a catch twenty two. Do you know how much they were paying him or no? But you're right, nah. that is a catch twenty two. You don't know, okay? I don't even know. Yeah, but it is like, interesting. I mean, with some people, it works out. Like the the guy who now is in the WWE, the guy who was oh the Miz, yeah, the Miz. He was on Real World or Road Rules or something, and then he eventually mm-hmm. went on that. But with other people, it's just like no, I they if they're not already somewhat comfortable like financially, then they can't even do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, cause you're just not gonna like, what are you, you gonna do? Go it. broke yeah, while yeah. you're fucking on a show for a year. When- but no disrespect to like a fucking 16 year old girl in Alabama who got pregnant. But like you are more famous because you were on MTV than you would have been without that shit. Oh regardless yeah. Regardless of how much they were paying you. And the overwhelming majority of in those instances, they're not gonna, that's all they're gonna do in terms of being in the public eye for sure. Yeah. They yeah. could get their life together in other ways and do whatever, but very rarely. I mean, what, you have how many honey boo-boos are there? One, right? The <laughs> yeah. And what's going on with her now? I heard that her mom lost weight. Mama June Son, or whatever the fuck yeah. her name is. She got skinny. Honey boo-boo is like a young girl now and looks disgusting. Like She's not now. the cute little chubby girl anymore. She's like a fucking disgusting. I mean, Well, does she still drink that go-go juice which had like – Red Bull and fucking <laughs> dead fireflies and cocaine in it and shit. That shit will probably fucking keep you right for a flight if you got some of that. Oh, God, no. I want to fight people on the flight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, let's see. Honey Boo Boo. Yeah, she looks a lot different. It was weird How seeing her. How old is her, she like, now? I don't know, but she looked like a grown-ass woman. What ha- Mama June lost a lot of weight. What happened to... Honey Boo Boo? Her skin. Like... Did she get the skin removal surgery too? Who, the mom? Yeah. Why, her skin looks fucked no, up? No, because she was really big, so when you lose all that weight, you have a lot of oh, extra yeah, yeah, skin. Yeah, yeah. So I'm wondering if she got surgery to reduce the amount of skin, because if not, she's going to have really, really prominent stretch marks. Yeah, I doubt she gives a fuck about that. I mean, she's not... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. She's got to embrace her thickness. That's what we're doing now. I wonder if there's a, a, a rule... <laughs> As to how old you could be before you get the stomach surgery. Did she get the stomach surgery where they stapled she the stomach? She had to have because she was big. So? Yeah, she, she was. She was very big. I think when I saw her, I was like, you don't, you can't just lose weight naturally like like that like and look like that. Well, you know who had the stomach surgery and then they got rid of it? John Daly. What do you mean got rid of it? John Daly, the golfer. He yeah, had yeah, the yeah. stomach surgery. The, the lap band, I think they call it. So it's an actual like band yeah. that's keeping your body from like yeah ex- it makes it makes your more? stomach smaller so you're gonna feel full when you eat less. It's literal like it makes your stomach smaller so that hmm. when you'll eat half the amount and be like I'm full that's it I don't even want to eat anymore. He got rid of it. He had it and then what happened was he said number one he had no energy all the time, and then number two he started playing worse golf and he's a golfer, oh. and so he was like I'm getting rid of this shit and so he got rid of it and now he's fat as fuck again. <laughs> But he's playing better. He won. He won a tournament. <laughs> yeah, I feel like for him, it's just like he's got to just own who he is. Well, that, I was going to say, that's the thing. With some people, they're just that's their shit is like, I'm yeah. that guy. I'm yep. that guy who drinks Diet Cokes all the time, smokes cigarettes all the time, drinks all the fucking time. Um, and that's just who he is. It's almost like if you get rid of that for him, then who is he? Yeah. Like yeah, that's yeah. half of his shit is I'm that guy. Mm-hmm. You know, that's like if you like get rid of the overweight of golfer. Woods, Tiger Woods, you know, being practicing all the time. Like, that was Tiger's mm-hmm. thing. He always, he was obsessed. John Daly's thing was, I don't really give a fuck about golf. I'm just going to be drunk and shit, but I'm just naturally good. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, that lap band surgery. I wonder if there's an age limit. Like, oh, you can't get it when you're until you're certain age. They probably do that shit for anybody if you fucking pay the right amount of money. <laughs> yeah, but if you're still growing, like, then the lap band's got to grow oh, with true. you. You know what I'm saying? That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sure I don't there's no restrictions with that. Because I'm asking because I'm looking at Mama June and Honey Boo Boo, and they do look so different. And, like, I feel like she wants her to get this surgery. 
the lap band surgery. But she wants Honey Boo Boo to get the shit. I'm just making shit up. Like oh, I'm oh, guessing. Oh, oh. I'm just saying. I'm looking at the picture, and right now it looks like Honey Boo Boo weighs more than Mama June. Yeah, I think I saw that too, and I was like, "Who?" I, I didn't even recognize her at first. Yeah, so I feel like she'd probably want Honey Boo Boo to get the surgery, but it might be too young. <laughs> probably, yeah. But you're right. There's some shit that like it's just a staple of some people. There was um, there's a football player Brian Urlacher. He was for the Bears, and like his shit was like he was a linebacker and he was always bald, and then he got um hair transplant. <laughs> Oh, and like people yeah. are like, he looks, he is not, he doesn't look intimidating anymore. He looks like a little like bitch. Uh, well, I was going to say any, any change people really fucking hate. Like I recently, I just did it a few days ago. I changed my Twitter picture and my YouTube picture uh-huh. to just me in a tie. Mm-hmm. And, and it's a kind of a similar picture. The old picture I still have like the same similar ish look on my face. Maybe there's a little bit more of a smile in the, in the newer one, mm-hmm. but like everybody just shits on it. <laughs> really and it's like but but the point i made is i i i was saying like but you guys were shitting on it when i was orange man too like the last picture i was orange in the picture i remember the last filter yeah Yeah, yeah, and everybody hated it at first they're like this shit is stupid go back to the other one yada yada but then as soon as i got rid of the orange one and did the new one with the tie everybody's like go back to the orange one that shit is so much better yeah it's like well and no matter what i do somebody's gonna hit me with that it doesn't yeah. matter like there's no any type of change people any type of change people are gonna be like this is not the shit that it, it was but yep. I know it was a matter of fact that, you know, I'll keep this picture for however long I do, probably. I usually keep them for, like, two years, you know? <laughs> it, but, like, when I change this one, people be like, why the fuck did you change this one? Yeah. Even if I get a banging picture, they'll be like, no, the other one was better. I don't know why yeah. you're doing that. Yeah, that's yeah, that's happened to me before. I've seen something change. I'm just like, what? Yeah, like, like, you're just thrown off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But not enough to get fucking get mad. People are so mad. Like everybody's just mad. I think they're half fucking around with me when they yeah, say that. Probably. They're just like whatever. There yeah. are and people always say funny shit. Like it's hilarious when you because it's so fucking creative. The internet is like yeah, it, it the, really is. Somebody said, um, "You look like a, a middle school vice principal." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, that is so fucking true. I do. I was looking at the picture. I'm like, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I look like a middle school vice principal. I can't even deny that in that picture. Yeah, people are fucking funny, man. <laughs> well, the, you can't pull shit on the internet. The internet can smell bullshit from a mile away. Yeah. They don't let you get away with it. They just won't. Nope. That's the one thing they don't tolerate. You can be honest and wrong, and the internet will be fine like fine that's okay you could be you could be honest and wrong Mm -hmm. but if you're if you're bullshitting they're gonna be like fuck you you i'd rather you be honest and wrong yeah like you know what i'm saying like well that's in real life too but like nobody just respects fake people like yeah i'm thinking of that fucking tommy lauren lady like no one respects her like people you could be an asshole no she does have a following she has a following for like fucking just horny ass like <laughs> conservatives. Like that's not a bad point. I would really love to see the demographics of who is like following her on Twitter and stuff because there yeah, is a decent chance. Her. Like they put her on Fox News and she does her final thoughts rant on Fox News and it's like, well, hold on. The average age of people on Fox News is like seventy years old. They're all overwhelmingly old white men. Yeah, like, it is kind of true that that's who would love her. I mean, I'm not saying there are no younger people who like her, but I wouldn't be surprised if her audience is very old. She doesn't. She like it. She just she can't have an intelligent fan base. How dare it's you just, say that? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's just like if you're intelligent and you and you and you respect someone who doesn't even like really believe in what she's saying. Yeah, then like I, you can't be fucking intelligent. I I mean, there's some. You're right. There's some commentators who are like that. No, you're not. If you're listening to this person and you really believe like what they're saying, you're not that bright. Like if somebody's a fan of Hannity, I'm like, you're yeah. just that's so sad because I could show you in a matter of five minutes, I could like disprove his whole career just by showing you clips of him saying one thing and then changing his position and being a hypocrite. And saying another thing when it's a yeah. Republican or Democrat, so it's yeah. like it's like yeah, I agree with you. And Tommy Lahren probably fits in that category. Because well, like even if I'm at, if I'm at a party and like someone comes in and he's a, like just a, comes across as an asshole, but that's his shit. I mean, I respect him. <laughs> he's just like an asshole. Yeah, if he's an honest asshole, sure. He's an honest asshole. Yeah, yes, for sure. <laughs> um, but there's some like I I respect like Ron Paul 
even though he's uh he's I don't agree with him on a lot of stuff. Like mm-hmm. the, and the, I'm making that point just so everybody knows. I'm not saying this as like a a partisan thing. Like it it's more about the substance of what the individual's saying. So even though I don't agree with Ron on a lot, I know he's honest and he believes what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And even when I disagree with him, he'll provide an argument for why he believes what he believes. But people like like Sean Hannity is just like, no, you're just a hack and you're a really yeah. silly person. Yeah. Um, so we're we're gonna wrap it up in a little bit with the with the polls. I want to run through the poll uh, answers. But did you watch the Super Bowl? I was I was gonna bring that was one of the things I was gonna bring up. Um, oh. I did, and I was happy the Eagles won, even same. though I, I don't care about football, but I don't like Tom Brady. Yeah, same. Um, so I was happy they won, but I heard it was like one of the best ever. Is, would you agree with that? Um, yeah, it was a really good game. Um. I mean, they say every fucking year it's the best Super Bowl ever. Like, well, you know, they have been good though. And I, again, I hate football, but they have been, like every time I, I that's like the one game I watch is the yeah. Super Bowl. And I feel like every year there's been drama. Or yeah, it's, it happens uh, yeah. often. Like drama at the Super Bowl happens quite a bit. Yeah, because I mean, like the 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 I mean, the stakes were all on the line. So like, I feel like even in not in a dramatic moment, it, like there's gonna be a play or there's gonna be something happen that gets you know. Is is a huge deal. So I mean, like, I don't know. The last couple of years have been good. A lot, this last Super Bowl was good, but I don't know. I, again, I think they say every year it's, it's the best Super Bowl and exciting. If it's a close game, it's the best Super Bowl ever. So uh, they say Tom Brady's number one, a Trump supporter. Yeah, fuck him. Number two, he has a what a thousand rings already. Yeah, five. Oh my god. Yeah, he's um, married to fucking Giselle. And that's the third thing. He's married to a model. So I was like, yeah. you know what, man. Go fuck yourself. I need you to... <laughs> I want him to be able to, when he goes to sleep at night, there's got to be a thought of, like, that one thing. Because mm-hmm. everybody in their life, everybody listening to this right now, me, Corin, we're all regular people, and we mm-hmm. all have a litany of things that happen in our life, positive and negative. And when we go to sleep at night, we think, like, ah, there's that thing that happened. Like, sometimes I'll just be sitting there, and something will pop in my head that I did that was awkward as fuck when I was in, like, eighth grade. And that shit will bother me. I'm like, ah, I was so fucking <laughs> awkward and that shit. So, like, that'll happen. But I feel like with a guy like Tom Brady, it's just nothing but... Just clear skies, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, you know what, man? Fuck you. Yep. Because that's not... And, and nobody... the coach comes across the same way like that, too. Where it's just like, he won two Super Bowl with the Giants. He won five with the Patriots. Like, it's just like he was the cons- gonna... He might be considered the greatest coach ever. But, like, you need to lose. And you need to yeah. lose at a big event to humble yourself. Yes, you have to face adversity from time to time or yep. else you come across as just such a prick. God, that's so prickish. Like, you won mm-hmm. all those rings and you fucking married a model and you like yeah. Trump and it's like, ah, oh. he, he's like the quintessential jock from like high school that you'd see in one of those like 1990s romance movies where like the jock with like the jacket and gets the just girl. everything goes right for them. Yeah. It's like, ah, fuck that guy. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I was true. happy when he lost because, like, yeah, that exact point. I was just like, he needs to be humbled. Like, w- 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 when you go your whole life and just nothing goes wrong. Yeah, like, give him you're one just a thing. Prick. And now he yeah. has it. Now he's got one thing that it's like, yeah. oh, yes. So when he goes to yeah. sleep at night, he gets to feel like the rest of us. Like, but damn, then, it like, wasn't perfect. They showed um, his wife tweeted and was trying to explain to his kids, like, yeah, like about losing and stuff. And her argument was like, yeah, Philadelphia's never won, but your dad has five rings. It's like, no, just give fucking credit to someone oh, else. Oh man, better they did that shit. Dad. That makes me hate him even more. Yeah. Why would they like, do that? Yeah, the way she was explaining to her kids, like that her dad is still better than the Eagles, is just like, like, fuck you. You didn't learn. Like, yeah, they were better than your fucking dad. Like, you, you, it's not all going to be perfect for you, you, you young Brady's. Oh, man, they really annoy me. Like, with Ty- video, Tiger Woods, huh? like, he went through that shit where his yeah. old dirty laundry was public as fuck, and there was a period where everybody hated him, but then mm-hmm. after a while, everybody's like, you know what, man? Come on back. We we want to see it again, you know? Yeah, people like those, adv- like, yeah. they, they want to see you rise from, Because like, if a- he was just the whole time just nothing but winning and just always everything perfect, and he married that woman and everything was perfect and then no- nothing ever happened, then everybody's going to be like, fuck you. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Yep. And that, look, that, you know, it's funny because 
This actually links to, to presidential candidates and politicians, too. Because people don't want to see, like, that fake-ass politician who's got, like, the perfect family. And, mm-hmm. like, standing up there, they got two kids and a dog and a white picket fence. And, like, they talk in that politician way. Now that shit is a detriment. Like, maybe yeah. in, like, the 1970s or 80s, people would have looked at that and been like, yes, that's what we want to see. But now yep. they're like, oh, go fuck yourself with your fucking perfect nonsense. I think that's why people gave... Well, uh, Anthony Weiner is just on a different level, but like he got like even three chances with his He's shit. He's on another level, is right. <laughs> but um, when Elliot Spitzer was with some hookers yeah, and stuff, people mm-hmm. were like, eh, "We'll give him a second chance." Like, yeah. Okay. The one thing that did him in, which annoys me, is that so if, if you keep every single situation the same, but he didn't crack down on prostitution when he was yeah, then I would be like, "Okay, I'm totally gonna defend this guy." But he didn't. <laughs> he cracked down on it. And then he turns around and he's going to one. It's like, well, don't fucking do that. Just be honest and be like, I think this shit should be legal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, like, that's yeah, the yeah. one thing. But you're right. They did. Elliot Spitzer was great on the issue of Wall Street. He was the sheriff of Wall Street. He went after them. And then, mm-hmm. shocker, they brought that guy down. So his his dirty laundry gets aired out in public because that's the dude who was threatening the people with the real money and power on Wall Street. So yeah. you're right. I agree with you. I, I like that guy. Mm-hmm. Um. So I, I saw right before uh, I came, right before I came on here that somebody mm-hmm. somebody uh, sent to me. Apparently, somebody does these videos where like it's fake presidential uh, matchups. Like, what would happen if it's this person versus this person? And then oh, they, okay. They go through the whole map and like which states they'd win and stuff. And somebody did me versus Ben Shapiro. <laughs> ben Shapiro, who the fuck? Ben Shapiro is a, con- he's a conservative commentator. Conservative oh, okay. commentator. If you saw his picture, you'd be like, okay, that guy. Uh huh. Um, Did you win? No. Oh, what the fuck? Well, that's what I wanted to talk about. Is that I'm so triggered by this <laughs> because the guy's going through it and like, and I like how the comment section just was like, "No, you're wrong. Kyle would win." <laughs> the comment section was just a litany of like, "This is the worst one you've ever done. Kyle would win." <laughs> the next comment was like, "Kyle's a populist. He would r- win the Rust Belt. I can't believe you put it like this." Yeah, and it's like that's really so true. I was I was watching. He had me losing like Rust Belt states. I'm like, what the? F- How do you have me losing Rust Belt states? Those are the states where all their jobs were outsourced mm-hmm. uh, because of NAFTA and all the trade deals. And Ben Shapiro is a right winger on economics, and he's a big free market capitalism guy. That's what ruined those places, allowing them to ship the jobs out because the captains of industry, the owners of the of the businesses, wanted to make more money. And I'm the guy who's out there like, I hate all the trade deals. I want to bring the jobs back here. I want to create factories here. I would fucking crush him in those states. Yeah, but we've seen that. That states. doesn't matter. He just was, he didn't even like really address it. He was just like, uh, and Ben is going to win this state and this state. I'm like, what the fuck? I, oh, I would totally any, win that like, state. Reasoning as to why? I, I don't remember what it was, or I don't even know if he gave reasoning for a lot of the states because he went through it kind of fast. But um, mm-hmm. then... Um, he even had, they even had me losing Colorado. I'm like, what nah. the fuck? There's no way I'd lose Colorado. I would yeah, crush Colorado in Colorado. Closer. Yeah. I think they had me losing Florida. I'm like, no, I would crush no. in Florida. Like, yeah, old ladies would about? like you. <laughs> <laughs> you would, cr- yeah, no. you would crush Florida. No, well, look, the thing is, like, I would crush Ben Shapiro. And that's not, yeah, a, yeah. That's not a, a shot at Ben Shapiro. It's just, listen, man, you have made a career out of, you know, one of the things you do is you go around and talk about how, like, minimum wage laws are bullshit. <laughs> like, okay, try selling that to the electorate, big guy. Enjoy. Like, I'm going to fucking run roughshod over you. The guy argues against uh, Medicare for all, uh, uh, universal health care, all the time. So, like, what, you really? You think that message is going to fucking work? 60% of the country is already with me. And that's before yeah. I even start to make my arguments. And when I make my arguments, I'm going to make them a lot better than any fucking mealy mouth politician out there right now. So no, what the fu- if I was I was so triggered. I was like, "Are you kidding me? You had Ben Shapiro beat me. Not only did he beat me in this uh, this hypothetical, he had over three hundred electoral votes." I'm like, "No, that's a, that w- that's a crushing victory for him. That's yeah. ridiculous." Yeah, you would. Yeah, I don't even know the guy, but I just feel like fuck him. He, you know what it is? His appeal and he, Shapiro. People don't people don't get down with Jews. That's another thing. Is yes, there's a lot of anti-Semitism. Number one. Yeah, and he would be like running as the Republican, just... so there's that to deal with. Um, 
And then also, like, his whole thing is, he's also kind of like an anti-Trump Republican. Mm -hmm. So somebody made a point in the comment section. They're like, how are you going to have him win when at least 20% of the Republicans are not going to like him right up front because he's anti-Trump? Mm -hmm. So you're going to have him run as a Republican while he openly shits on a previous Republican president who the base loves. So, like, his base would abandon him. They're not that yeah. hot on him. Whereas my base, the progressive base, they like me. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I want Medicare for all and free college and a living wage and ending the wars. So it's like I serve my base. He abandons his base. Plus, like you said, there's still... Decent amount of anti-Semitism out there. Hell yeah, in the Jewish. South and the fucking Midwest. He's Jewish, you, they hear a exactly. Jewish name? Exactly. And then on top of all that, Ben, no disrespect, he's like, he's kind of unlikable. <laughs> like, he's got that vibe to him. Like, here's the difference between me and Ben Shapiro. So, like, I'm a douche, but I know my flaws. Like, I know I'm a douche. I tell you guys all the time my flaws. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not... I, I, I know that about me. I have the perception enough or the wherewithal enough to judge myself. The but thing, you're not a dick. But the thing with him is he's a douche too, but you get the sense that he would never admit that. That mm -hmm. it's like he thinks like, no, I'm the, I'm the man. And it's like, dude. And that's the thing. He's like a really, his whole shtick is talks fast um, and just tries to deceive you. Makes simple uh, points. Talk fast, mm -hmm. make simple points. Oftentimes those points aren't true. Sometimes they are true. But talk fast, make simple points, and then he's, he does have a big following. Don't get me wrong. And there's an argument he, his following is even bigger than mine. But I don't think in a national election that that guy would be able to hold a candle. Yeah, fuck so, Ben Shapiro. Hashtag fuck Ben Shapiro. <laughs> <laughs> ben, if you're listening to this... You know what's crazy? There might actually come a day where that election happens. <laughs> that he runs for president and I run for president. And then it's like a fucking... The, that would be what's up. The YouTube I'll election. be your hype man. Hopefully you let me be your hype man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you'd be uh, my campaign manager. You would be... <laughs> like they did with Trump... Uh, what's his face? Corey Lewandowski was Trump's uh, campaign uh, manager. And he used... guy got like, arrested, right? <laughs> well, no, that was a different one. Oh, no, it might have been oh. Lewandowski. You're right. It might have been him. Um, but his whole thing was let Trump be Trump. So everybody was trying to control Trump and Corey Lewandowski was like, no, let him be him. And everybody's like, you're crazy. He's going to fuck it up and blah, 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 blah. And Lewandowski's like, son, let him be him. And then he yeah. ended up winning. You'd be my Lewandowski where everybody's like, oh, you got to stop him from saying that. And you're like, son, 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 let him say be it. him. <laughs> and then it'll all work out. Just let him do his thing. There's like, people just say like, like when we grew up, it's just like, yo, do you. Do you? Yeah. That used to be the shit. Be like, yo, should I do that? Do you, son? Imagine that's my campaign uh, slogan. Yo, do you, comma, son? Kalinsky, 20 whatever year. Do, do you. you. <laughs> that's gangster. That's gangster. Do yo, do you? I think I'd go more along the lines of like living wage or some shit like that. But we might add do you as a subline. Okay. By the time, time you run, we're going to be like the kids voting are going to want to hear do you. <laughs> Okay, ready for the results? Yeah, let's hear them. We got the, all the polls are done, skis. Okay, so let's go all the way to morning versus night shower. I called it morning wins, but okay. morning barely edges out night. It's a close race here, man. Really? It was 52% morning, 48% night. That's surprising. I thought it would smack it more than that. 52% morning, 48%. That's a, that's a good, I like that result. The fact that it was like a battle. Yeah. But I, I, like I said, I think morning wins because I think most people do morning showers. Yeah. I'm not basing that on anything. It's just a feeling I have, but. <laughs> like night showers could be a new trend that's starting or some shit. Well, again, just so I've, if you think about it for a second, yeah, there's, a I think, a better argument for night shower. Because, look, you could get up in the morning. Let's say you get up in the morning. Like, you, you did a night shower and you got that mm -hmm. great feeling when you get in bed and you're like, oh, this is worth it. I love night showers. If you want to get up the next morning and throw some water in your hair or some shit, you'll kind of feel like you took a shower. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could still get that kind of wake-up feel from just a, splash, just like splash a, some water, water on your face, face, put some water in your hair, whatever, and then you'll be yeah. like, oh, okay, I feel I feel good. So night showers might be the movement, son. I know for me, when I sleep on the pillow, like, the back of my hair will, like, be this way or something, so my hair will be all fucked up, like... Some weird part of my hair will be sticking up. And every, I'm like, ah, I can't. Every morning for me, when I wake yeah. up, I'm like, the sides of my hair is like, 
Yeah. It's all over the place, and then I have to throw water in it, and then yeah, and yeah, yeah. sometimes gel it. Like, but I try to go light on the gel nowadays. Yeah. Um. Okay. Best beer. We called it Corona. Nice. Corona, thirty-eight percent. Heineken gets second place with thirty-one percent. I thought that show would be a lot. And Wait, thirty-one? Thirty-one percent for Heineken. And Corona had thirty-two. Corona had thirty-eight. Wow. Heineken. Corona, Corona had 38. thirty-eight. Oh, okay. Um, and then we were right. The Coors Light is last with twelve percent. And Budweiser Bud and Bud Light gets 19%. They're in third. So we called it Corona number one, Coors Light last. So we're 100% so far. It's so weird because I feel oh. like they've, I've, I've heard that Corona, they make them in like dirty, like the pipes are dirty or some shit. And that's why the beer is like yellow. Well, whatever. That shit's delicious. So <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Um, okay. So you called it with Girl Scout cookies. I was wrong. You were right. Thin Min smacked. Thin Min smacked. Thin Min's got 49%. Um, in a four-person poll. In a four-person poll, so forty-nine percent. Damn. Twenty-nine percent for Samoas. Okay, so at least they, they got second. Yeah, they crushed the third and the fourth, but yeah. Thin Mints crushed Samoas, and then Tagalongs and Shortbread are tied with eleven percent. Um, damn, you, you know called that one, man. I gotta yeah. give you credit on that because I thought it would be close, Thin Mints and Samoas, but it's the right. It's the right order. I would have liked to see Samoa's been a little like more competitive with Thin Mints. Yeah, you know, I want to tell everybody who kind of quickly voted Thin Mints, like, you don't know what you're missing if you don't have Samoa's. They need to get the purple shit. They have to get it because Samoa's are, it's They're literally the up there. Like, it, it might be in the running of, it's your last Best meal, you're on time. death row, and you have to have dessert. What do you want for your dessert? It's in the runnings, in the conversation yeah. there. There's even like a little caramelly, like, like juiciness to the shit unbelievable and i don't even like toasted coconut but you sprinkle that on top and it gives it a little yes yeah, that delicious. cookie's banging okay ihop versus waffle house the first upset of the night ihop crushes wow crushes man 61 percent ihop 39 percent waffle house wow that's the i'm a little surprised by that one yeah just because Based off that fact I'm that I, uh, Waffle House sells a lot of other shit. No, I'm surprised by that. I've never even had Waffle House, and I would have picked Waffle House. <laughs> 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 Just because IHOP's okay, but like I don't know. I've never been totally blown away by it. I've never had Waffle House, but I, the pictures, I'm like, holy shit, I want that shit. <laughs> um, yeah, Waffle House is good. I love Okay, that Starburst, sign. predictable result. Pink wins 57% to 43%. Okay, good. Everybody's correct on that. <laughs> good, good, good. And then the last poll of the night, Lay's crushes. Crushes, well, um, man. What was the order of that one? So is Lay's Utz like last by like no, 2%? Utz is not even last. What? Wise is last. I think Wise might be only in the Northeast. Wow. Maybe Wise really? is only in the Northeast. Maybe. Um, I feel like Wise doesn't really have that many chips anymore. That might be the reason why. The, yeah, they don't have that many chips anymore, maybe. Yeah. But, okay, so Lay's 50% beast. Then you have Ruffles in second with 35%. Then you have Utz with 11% and Wise with 4%. Wow, Wise only got four. Wise does make Wise makes that honey barbecue banging one in that yellowish delicious. bag. Delicious. That Absolutely might delicious. be the best chip of all time. I wouldn't go that far, but it's delicious. <laughs> um, it's a good ass chip, dude. These were good polls. We did very good polls today. We got to think of some shit for next week. Well, one of the things I was thinking of doing, but I feel like it might be too specific because people don't know. A lot of the audience doesn't know anything about wrestling, but I was thinking Raw versus SmackDown. That's a good one. But we could do did better we than do, that. Um, we could do better than that. Did we do the uh, Applebee's versus Fridays versus Chili's nope. versus Buffalo Wild Wings yet? We didn't I do that I feel like yet. that would be a good one. I'm going to write that down right now. I think those are probably the biggest chains. Applebee's, Fridays, Chili's. And then, is Buffalo Wild Wings in that category? There's other shit too. There's um, there's Applebee's versus Red Fridays Robin versus Chili's versus what was the last one? Um, Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I like that. What was the one you floated at the end there? I didn't like there's that Red, one as much. Red Robin. Yeah, Red Robin. I don't even know if I've ever had a Red Robin. Remember there Ground Round from back in the day? Oh yeah. Ground I have round. Like, I have like weird memories of ground round from when I was a kid. I feel like we went to ground round and then I like there was like a big ass screen, like a movie thing, but like an empty room. Do you remember this? There was there was one on Central Avenue. That's the one I'm talking about. I went yeah. to that shit and then I would go in, we'd eat, and then there was like a room with a movie playing, like a big screen, 
Is that, that was, a thing that, that was, was like there? the molestation room? I was gonna say maybe I'm having <laughs> fucking uh, just like clips of part of a molestation in my mind. Um, the, the GM of the place was just like, "Oh yes, cow's back. Come into this room." <laughs> and then, then, then a doctor came out and said, Take, "Pull down your pants." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> Damn. Um, um, what the um ground round was banging? That they've probably been bankrupt since like 1996, right? I think there's a couple left. Like, I know just, there's there's blockbusters in Alaska. Do you remember Rockwell's? I love that shit. They had great food. Yeah, there's uh, there might be still one in like Tuckahoe or something like that. Still open? I think so. If that, I give them a lot of credit if they are. I used to love that place, man. I thought their yeah, food Rockwell's was so good. Yeah, Rockwell's banging. Yeah. Ground Round still exists? There's still some? They still exist? Ground Round used to have penny a pound, and I think it would be on Wednesdays, and my parents would just bring us in and they'd be like, yeah, he weighs 50 pounds. <laughs> and they, like, they had a scale <laughs> in the front of the store. <laughs> Oh my god! I can't believe they still exist. Ground round. There, uh, there's one in Brookhaven, New York. Where the fuck That's is far. that? It says on Montauk Highway, so I'm guessing by Montauk. Oh, okay, I feel like there's probably one in Boston. I think I heard that there was one in Boston. So do we? Uh, I mean, have we done a poll on pizza yet? Oh, New York versus Chicago. Nah, not New York versus Chicago. Um, or like Pizza Hut, Domino's, I Little mean, Caesars. Could do that, but. We yeah we could do that one, but I'm thinking more like just like Sicilian versus plain versus nah. Chick- maybe you're right. Maybe yours is better. I mean, because not I many think people- Domino's would smack Pizza Hut, but Pizza really? Hut is now becoming a Domino's like type chain. Well, I was gonna say I actually love Pizza Hut way more, but they don't. So deliver. do I. They don't deliver. Yeah, no, they're, they 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 never like took off like Domino's like Domino's. Is just like a takeout spot. It's you either go in there or they deliver it to you. Pizza Hut used to be like a sit down place and it was more fancy ish, but now they just like all the Pizza Huts by me. There's no more sit down. It's more just walk in like yeah, a Domino. Go. Yeah, but do they the deliver yet or no? Um, yeah, they deliver. We the one around me. I, well, first of all, I don't have any around me. It's pretty far, but you, they don't deliver. I don't think, unless they're changing it. They, I think they're changing all their mottos. I used but to that would be a good one. That would be like – you could even yeah. throw Papa John's on there. You have to. You actually have yeah. to throw them on there. Domino's. Papa John's, Little Caesar, Domino's, and Pizza Hut. That would be a pretty down. even poll, I feel like, because some people swear by Papa John's, but I don't fuck with that shit at all. Uh, I, I'm sad to say I actually like I like their pizza a little – more than Little Caesar's. Um, but they Little don't, Caesar's has that $5 hot and ready. Um, I think I've had Little Caesars a few times. I think they, <laughs> did they used to do Little Caesars pizza at like, uh, some sporting event at like MSG or something, or maybe Yankee Stadium, something like that, right? Mm, I'm not sure. I think they have like a Little Caesars arena or something like that. That's going to be a good poll. We're going to do that one. But I feel like it's fucked up that we're doing that poll just because we're New Yorkers and New York pizza is the shit. And so yeah, like I know. we're asking like, which of these non-New York pizzas are... But we're also fucking like fast food eaters where we're just like we would just house a whole domino. No, I, I'm you know, listen, I'm 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 one of those people who even though I love New York pizza and I'm around New York pizza every now and then I'll have some of that shit. Oh, yeah. You, you, you have to. But I told you there was I, I, I had um, there were some bad experiences I had with Domino's where like I got like old ingredients and I was like they they're serving me shit that's like expired. <laughs> and so now I the only time only times I would order them I get it on like a a Friday or Saturday night when, when I you know, know that, shit, that is fresh. shit is gonna be fresh yeah yeah that's a good point oh that's probably such a bad taste yeah I had it on like a Tuesday or some shit yeah yeah and you're gonna like, get some oh nasty my, shit because it left a terrible aftertaste I'm like there's oh. something wrong with this I saw a funny ass tweet I think like a while ago and it was uh. Someone tweeted at Domino's and was like, yo, Domino's, I just got my pizza and there's no sauce on it, nothing on it. And Domino's was like, I'm so sorry. Please DM us. Like, we apologize. And then the guy wrote on it. He was like, my bad. I'm high as fuck. The pizza's just upside down. Oh, my <laughs> God. Is that real? If that's I don't real, know if it's it was hilarious. like a fake like meme thing I saw or something like that. <laughs> but it had me dying. That is pretty fucking funny. I like that a lot. Um. Uh, what up? There was uh, I was just forgot what I was gonna say. Oh. Yeah, I'm hungry now that we're talking about food. I know I just housed the five dollar hot and ready yesterday. 
I can I, always get to the last slice and I never I can't finish it. Really? Yeah. For I'm, some reason, I'm, I just, I'm well known to finish everything that's in front of me. Yeah, you can eat a lot. I'm big on that. Like, oh, it, this is all here. Well, I'm gonna eat it all. Yeah, you've always had like a big like. Yeah, I could do that. But I don't I, know if it's a big appetite, or you could just eat whatever the fuck's in front of you. I could eat whatever's in front of me, but I oftentimes go really long in between meals. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not uncommon for me to have even one big meal in a day. Mm-hmm. But sometimes it'll be, like, too really spaced out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to go eat. All right, let's wrap this bitch up. Um, love y'all, and uh, we'll see you soon. And uh, I was going to say something that's um, rated X, but I'll bite my tongue tonight. Suck a dick. <laughs> see you, everybody. Peace.